The Penny Singleton Show. <laughs> On stage tonight from Hollywood, The Penny Singleton Show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Penny Singleton. I want to welcome you to our first show. In our story, I am Mrs. Penny Williamson. I live in a small city called Middleton. There's nothing very special about it. It's just a nice place to live, I guess. It's a quiet city, and I live on a quiet street in a not-so-quiet house. I say not-so-quiet because... That's one of the reasons. There's another reason. She's younger. Uh Uh-oh, the door. Would you excuse me just one moment? Can you come upstairs? Oh, dear. Margaret, would you... I'll answer it, Mrs. Williamson. Margaret! Thank you, Margaret. I'm coming, Dee Dee. Oh, you're trying to get breakfast and you got to answer the door. Yes? Good morning. Are you the lady of the house? I'm the cook, but I'm also a lady. (laughs) I'm sure. I'm positive. Oh. <laughs> My name is Mr. Pringle. I'm with the Trotter Poll, and we're making a survey to determine who is the American family's favorite American. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> uh, I'd like to have some facts about the family. Uh, what is the lady's name, please? Mrs. Penny Williamson. Penny? One-tenth of a dime. Oh, Penny. And uh, Mr. Williamson? There's no Mr. Williamson. The war. Oh, children? Two. D.G., she's going on 13, and Sue, she's 8. Is that all? That's enough. Now, if you'll please uh, excuse... Is Mrs. Williamson employed? Real estate. Williamson and Wiggins. Although Mr. Wiggins likes to think of it as Wiggins and Williamson. Now, if you'll uh, please... Could I see Mrs. Williamson? I'm sorry, but she's late, and she's got her hands full. I think it's toads today. Toads? Toads. <laughs> But, Mother, Sue's got another box in our bedroom. There's something inside of it. I could hear it scratching all night. If it's toads again, I'll die. I'll go stark raving mad. Dee Dee, I told you it can't be toads. I banned toads last week. Sue, come out here. I want you to know that I'm at the end of my rope, Mother. I just can't go on sleeping in a zoo. Now, Dee Dee. Oh, here you are, Sue. Mother, it got out. Gigi, did you let my lizard out of the box? Oh, lizards? The one day of the year when I have to look my absolute best, I spend a sleepless night with lizards. Gigi, go take your shower. I may drown myself. Sue, what did I tell you the other day? Which day? Uh, Thursday. On Thursday, you told me a lady always washes the bathroom after using it. (laughs) Friday, then. On Friday, you told me a lady would never say, I'd like to kick Freddie Nagel's teeth out. (laughs) Then it was Saturday I told you about keeping things in your room. Now, what did I say? On Saturday, you told me I couldn't keep toads, snakes, or spiders in my room anymore. Well? You never mentioned lizards once. (laughs) All right. I'm mentioning lizards now, and to be on the safe side, I might as well include elephants, lions, tigers, bears... How about giraffes? Giraffes. (laughs) Mrs. Williamson, breakfast is ready. Uh, Right away, Margaret. Come on, Sue. Hurry up, (laughs) D.G. Oh, Sue, don't gulp your orange juice. Sip it. Enjoy it. What if a person enjoys gulping it? (laughs) Well, I know. A lady doesn't gulp her orange juice. That's right. Boy, a lady sure doesn't have much fun out of life. (laughs) Any mail for me, Mother? Yes. I thought you told me you stopped answering advertisements. Well, I did, but some of the returns are still coming in. She had her fingers crossed, Mother. D.G.? Mother, when I made my promise, I already had one letter written, and I mailed just that one. Pass the cow juice, please. Sue! (laughs) Milk! Here. Mother? Yes? Do you think I look a little like Greer Garson? Only when you're about to sneeze. (laughs) Oh, see who it is, D.G., while I talk to Margaret. All right, Mother. Margaret, when you're doing Sue's bedroom today, be careful where you put your feet. Why? There's a lizard in there. I quit. Oh, Margaret. Mother, I can 
can see who it is from the window. Mrs. Duncan. Oh, dear. Margaret, I'll make Sue find the lizard before she goes to school. Let her in, D.G. And Sue, when Mrs. Duncan is here, don't you dare mention any of the family problems or troubles. You, you know what Mrs. Duncan is. Yeah, the FBI of Middleton. <laughs> Penny, darling, forgive me for barging in like this. I just wanted to borrow a cup of flour. <laughs> Hello, Ida. Like some coffee? Why, thank you. I won't be stepping a foot out of the kitchen until uh, you... Sue, t- will you go to your room now and take care of that little matter Margaret is talking about? Oh, oh, what little matter? Is there something wrong? Are you in trouble? Just a lizard on the loose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot. Mice I consider in the line of duty. But lizard, All no. right. All right, Margaret. Remember, not a foot out of the kitchen. <laughs> My, she sounds so disgruntled, almost as if she hadn't been paid lately. <laughs> she has, Ida. Well, no, she hasn't, Mother. The check you gave her bounced. What? <laughs> Penny, you need money. Oh, no, Ida, no. I must have forgotten to transfer some from the savings account. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, sugar? Oh, thank you, dear, but I never use it. You should. <laughs> oh, really, Penny? I don't see how you manage as well as you do. Not that it isn't beginning to show a little. The strain, I mean. You do look tired. I don't feel tired. <laughs> well, I suppose a pretty widow like yourself does go out a great deal, and there's no getting away from it. Late hours will tell on a person. I really wouldn't know, Ida. Oh, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I confess everything. I've been leading a wild, mad life. That last church bingo party was a killer. (laughs) Uh, The one Judge Grundle took you to? Yes. Uh, When are you planning to marry him? Oh, Ida, I'm not planning anything. Well, well, if you do, I dread to think of how Mr. Wiggins will take it. I have no plans about Judge Grundle or Mr. Wiggins. After all, I've got two children already. Oh, and why on earth should you have plans, my dear? Neither one of them holds a candle to that handsome, distinguished-looking gentleman who called on you yesterday. I just happened to be looking out of my window, and I saw D.G. let him come in. You can't see our front door from your window. No, I ran outside. Oh, well, I... <laughs> I mean, I, I walked out front to rake the leaves. Well, and... I'm sure I don't know. D.G., who was here yesterday? Uh, yes, tell your mother, dear. Well, I wasn't keeping... Uh, any... Just a second, D.G. Well, Ida, if you've finished your coffee, I'll get that I'll flower. have another cup. Oh. Mother, I wasn't keeping anything from you. I was just going to surprise you. Mr. Clark was the reason I wanted to look beautiful today. Mr. Clark? Uh, That's Judge Grundle. I saw his car drive up. Oh, I'll let him in. My, he certainly calls on you early. He's driving me to work. My car's in the garage. Oh, what devotion. We must keep this Mr. Clark a deep secret from him. Oh, really, Ida? There's no Uh, Good morning, Penny, my dear. Hello, Judge. Morning, Ida. Uh, good morning, Judge Clark. Oh, I mean Judge Grundle. <laughs> How gauche of me. I was thinking of another of Penny's friends. Judge Clark? Who's Judge Clark? Oh, it isn't Judge Clark. It's a Mr. Clark, and I don't even know him. Dee who is Mr. Clark? Well, he's a famous artist, Mother, and he's going to paint my portrait. He usually charges $150, but he's positive... $150? He's positive mine won't cost a thing, because he's positive the Child and Family magazine will buy it for a cover. D.G., It was the last advertisement I answered, Mother. I'll tell you right now, Mr. Clark is not going to paint your portrait. Where is he? Well, he's staying at the Grandview Hotel, but she... As soon as I get to the office, I'll phone him. I found my lizard. Thank you, dear. Hello, Judge Grandel. Hello, my dear little Susan. And where did you find the lizard? I'll go get my hat. He was in the closet laying eggs. (laughs) He was laying eggs? (laughs) No, I I don't think he was laying eggs. I think she was. Why do you think that? (laughs) Well, uh, uh, why do I... It's, uh, It's like chickens. The man rooster doesn't lay eggs. The lady hen does. Why do you suppose that is? Uh, well, it's, um... Well, that's just the way things are. Why? <laughs> well, because. She lizards and hens can lay eggs. He lizards and he chickens can. Men can't do much, can they? <laughs> Well, I, I don't know I'm what... ready, Judge. Uh, thank heaven. <laughs> Goodbye, Judge Grundle. The next time you call, we'll have another interesting talk about sex. <laughs> we 
We're passing the Grandview Hotel, Penny. Uh, did you want to stop and talk to that clock fellow? Well, I should, but oh no, I'm late. I'll call him from the office. Now, if D.G. had a father, you wouldn't have to handle this little problem. As I've said to you before. As I've said to you before, no proposals right after breakfast, Judge Grundle. Judge Grundle. Penny, is there someone else? Is it Horace Wiggins? It's not Mr. Wiggins. He proposes to you, doesn't he? Well... No, no, don't tell me he doesn't. When is the time I've gone past your office and seen him down on his knees in front of you? Why, Judge Grundle, I didn't know you had a jealous bone in your body. Well, I... I haven't. But for years, I've wondered why Horace Wiggins' pants have the baggiest knees in Middleton. (laughs) Now I know. Judge Grundle, I don't take your proposals lightly. I think you're a wonderful catch for some woman. You're a regular pillar of society. Please don't think of me as a pillar. Think of me as a man. Somehow it's easier to think of you as a pillar. (laughs) Oh. Say, um, I wonder if that painter fellow D.G. talked about would be interested in doing an oil of me. I could uh, put it in the cart room. You already have a nice picture of George Washington. I could move him over. (laughs) We're coming to my office, Judge. Oh, yes. Thank you so much for driving me downtown. At your service. As for having your portrait painted, why don't you get our own Ed Hazeltine to paint you? Ed Hazeltine? Mm -hmm. He paints bonds. Oh, he painted a wonderful picture of the Browns' prize-winning bull last year. Well, I am not a bull. (laughs) Besides, that wasn't a bull he painted. It was a cow. It was? Yes. No wonder Sue is so confused. (laughs) Now, if she had a father... I know. She'd recognize Bull when she heard it. I mean, saw it. I mean, goodbye, Judge. Codfish and Beans, John L. Sullivan and Fred Allen, Harvard and MIT. As unrelated as these things seem, they all have something in common. Mm -hmm. They are all important parts of our American heritage and all native to Massachusetts. But more than the home of food and fighters, Massachusetts has been the home of liberty and freedom since 1620 when the Pilgrim Fathers arrived on the Mayflower to make the first permanent white settlement at Plymouth and the home of three United States presidents, poets such as Longfellow and novelist Herman Melville. But Massachusetts is still more. Mm -hmm. It's summers at Martha's Vineyard or on the Cape. It's standing on the bridge at Concord and watching the Middlesex farmers take up arms in April of 75. It's Boston's famous department store, not Filene's, but Raymond's where you bought the hat. (laughs) Massachusetts is the biggest tea party in history, and the tiny chickadee. The hush of winter's first snow falling on the old north church near the common, and the bloom of the Mayflower, almost before the last snow melts. Massachusetts is many things to many people. To all Americans, it's the birthplace of our nation. And now for Act Two of the Penny Singleton Show. We are at the real estate agency where Penny works. Mr. Wiggins, her partner, is in the office as Penny enters. Good morning, Mr. Wiggins. Morning, Penny. How come our friend Blind Justice drove you to work this morning? My car's in the garage, and I don't think you should refer to a judge like that. Oh, Oh, uh, excuse me. Wiggins and Williamson. Uh Uh-uh. The name of this firm is Williamson and Wiggins, just the way it was when my husband owned half of it. Now, Penny, I... Oh, uh, excuse me just a moment, sir. Penny, just last week we had a long talk. We and went... we agreed that whichever one of us had the most sales would have his name come first. All right, Which so... Which one of us has the best sales record? Hello? This is Williamson and Wiggins. <laughs> no, you got the wrong number. Now, Penny, we I... We had an agreement. But I was... Uh... Look, if we were married, we wouldn't have this problem. Penny. Penny, my dearest. 
Oh, for heaven's sakes, Mr. Wiggins, get up off your knees. Well, I'm serious. All you want to do is marry the Williamson out of Williamson and Wiggins. Oh, no, no. We'll, we'll call the firm the, the Wiggins is a real estate agency. You'll be the Z of the Wiggins is a I'd rather be the double Z of the business. Oh, doggone it, Penny. Look, what are you doing? I'm, I'm still proposing. I'm making a phone call for DG. What's the trouble around here? There's too many personal phone calls during the day. May I remind you again? Uh, oh, just a second, Mr. Wiggins. Grandview Hotel, Mr. Clark, please. Yes, I'll wait. May I remind you again of my sales record last month, Mr. Wiggins? Well, can I help it if I'm not as cute as you are? Oh. <laughs> Hello? Mr. Clark, this is Mrs. Williamson, and I... No, this isn't D.G. This is D.G.'s mother. What? Oh, my voice isn't as young as that. <laughs> Hmm? Does my face match my voice? Oh, no. Well, we've never met, but I certainly can't lie to you. It does. <laughs> what? You mean my portrait would be a sure thing for the cover of the American Mother? Uh, Penny, Penny, well, is, is that Deejee's painter? Yes. Oh. What, you'll be at my house at three? All right, we'll talk it over then. Bye. Mr. Wiggins, where'd you hear about him? Uh, when I came to the stoplight at your corner, Ida Duncan was crossing the road. Uh, uh, I was talking to your Mr. Clark just before you came in, and he said he was certain he could get my picture on the cover of Business World. <laughs> uh, Ida also said you had lizards in your house. You haven't paid your maid. You're broke. You've been out gadding every night. And... She said all this in the time it took the light to turn green? Well, she can tell about two different things at the same time. <laughs> When she talks about one thing, she uses sign language about the other. Oh, Mr. Wiggins, look at the time. I'd better phone Charmaine at the beauty parlor and make an appointment for right away. Penny, you're not quitting for the day. Mr. Wiggins, if I'm to represent the typical American mother, I owe it to my country to look my best. <laughs> The work, Charmaine. A complete overhaul. Okay. Oh, Charmaine, why are your fingers bandaged? I should have known better than massage Mrs. Duncan's face when she was talking. She bit me. <laughs> Did you have a doctor take care of him? Not only that, but I stopped at the vet's and got a rabies shot. <laughs> Gee, I don't think you look worried, Mrs. Williamson. Should I look worried? Well, if I was on the brink of starvation and bankruptcy, I'd look worried. My dearest friend, Ida. That's what she said. How about a mud pack today, Mrs. Williamson? I got some wonderful new mud in. It's called River Bottom Bomb. How much is it? Ten dollars a bottle. Ten dollars for a bottle of mud? Yeah. No wonder real estate's still so high. <laughs> Say, I'm having my portrait painted with a mud pack on for the cover of the beautician's magazine, let's face it. Oh? <laughs> Mr. Clark says he usually sells his portraits to magazines, and that way he don't have to charge the people nothing. He says I'm a cinch for the cover if I wear the mud pack. I suppose Mrs. Duncan told you about Mr. Clark. Mm-hmm. In fact, you've got him so much business, he's trying to find a regular studio. My goodness, my attic would be just perfect. As soon as you're finished, I'll phone Margaret and tell her to straighten it up. Mrs. Duncan's even going to have her portrait done. She is? Yeah, for the cover of the bird magazine. <laughs> Isn't that a kick? I'll bet the rest of the birds fly south earlier this year. <laughs> Margaret, you've done a wonderful job with the attic. It's a real artist studio. <laughs> well, uh, I'll bet Deejee will be happy when she knows you're going to let her have her portrait painted. She already is. I called her at school. Uh, Mother? Uh-oh, there she is now. We're in the attic, dear. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that could stand thrown out, Mrs. Williamson. Oh, Mother. Gosh, I just can't tell you how happy I am. Well, darling, I, I talked to your Mr. Clark and... Oh, he had such a nice voice. Oh, Mrs. Williamson, I've been meaning to ask you. Would you mind telling me what this is? What? Oh, that. Oh, <laughs> well, that's a painting I did of Dee Dee when she was little. I remember that. That's funny. One eye is blue and the other's brown. <laughs> I ran out of blue paint. <laughs> well, you want to keep this thing? No, I guess we'd better throw it out. Oh, maybe that's Mr. Clark. I'll answer it. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of excited about all this myself. <laughs> You are? Uh-huh. You see, I, I finally called Mr. Clark, too. I told him who I was and what I did, and he got a wonderful idea. 
He thinks he can sell my portrait to the old Dutch cleanser people. <laughs> well, how nice. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mrs. Williamson, there's just one thing bothering me, though, and I... I uh, well, um, I know you can't afford to have me work for you any longer, and... What? Well, well, I've got some money saved, Miss Williamson, and I could stay on without oh, you paying me. Oh, bless any... your heart, Margaret. Ida Duncan came back here after I left, didn't she? No. No, when I brought your car back from the garage, I passed Mrs. Duncan in her car. She was uh, also getting to something about wild parties when we come to the end of the street. I, I couldn't quite hear the rest of what she said. The fire hydrant she knocked over made too much noise. <laughs> oh, dear. D.G., who is at the door? It's only Judge Grundle. Oh, uh, what, what sort of talk is that? It's only Judge Grundle. She's dying for Mr. Clark to come. Oh. I didn't expect to see you here, Judge. And, Ma, you've still got your robe on. Uh, yes. Well, I called that Clark fellow, and he said something about the cover of the Barrister's Annual. Ooh, Penny. Uh, that's Ida. Uh, hello, Penny. Hello, Mr. Wiggins and Ida. My, I hope that's Mr. Clark now. Hello, Wiggins. Hello, Grundle. <laughs> well, thanks to Margaret, I've had a completely shattering day. And just what I wanted to look my best for the cover of the bird magazine. <laughs> well, don't worry, Ida. You don't have to do anything to look like a... Uh, what were you going to say, Mr. Wiggins? Well, I was going to say it looked like a crow, but I thought better of it. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Who are you? Me, Charmaine. Oh, I didn't recognize you with your mud pack on. <laughs> Nobody else did either. Mother, Mother. D.G., what's the matter? Oh, Mother, terrible things. Well, everything's just off. What? Are uh, you Penny Williamson? Yes. You are Mr. Clark? I'm Mr. Jackson. Where's Mr. Clark? In jail. What? Oh, please. In jail. Oh, now, now, please, everyone, please. Mr. Jackson, I don't understand. Who are you? Well, I'm Mr. Jackson of Jackson Publications. We publish such magazines as The Child and the Family, Let's Face It, The Bird Magazine. Uh, that's me. Uh, this clerk has been using our magazines as an inducement for people to have their portraits painted. What's wrong with that? Yes, after the magazines use the portraits, we get them back and we don't have to pay for them. That's what he said, Mr. Jackson. Well, you see, Clark makes a fortune out of people like you. He knows we turn his stuff down, so then he charges the people $150 anyway. The people usually pay up because they don't want others to know what fools they've been. Oh, no. Well, by George, Such a you racket, never come I... up before me. So, uh, I'll see what's... I'll... You see, I'll... folks, uh, we've been after this man for years, but he's moved pretty quietly. Fortunately, here in Middleton, some old gossip spread the word around so much we spotted him. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, Mother, I told everybody at school. My picture on the cover... Oh, I'll never be able to face him. I can't go back. Now is the time, Penny, when you need a man. Yes, Penny, I would... Now uh... is the time I need to be alone. Judge Grundle, would you take everybody downstairs? Perhaps you'd like me to... Uh, uh, you know, let, let's go, everybody. Family matter. Family matter. Come along. Well, you don't have to push, well, Judge. Right, you don't I can make it out of my own. <laughs> D.G., D.G., come here, dear. Yeah. Don't cry. I, I tell you, Mother, I, I won't be able to face them. They'll laugh, and your friends, too. D.G., once when I was just about your age, I told everybody at school I was going to be in the movies. I, I just made it up. I guess I wanted to be important. That night I realized that well, when they found out it wasn't true, they were going to laugh at me. And they did. It didn't last long. I lived. And I grew up, met a very nice man, your father, married him, and had two very nice children. We lived through these things, D.G. But... <clears throat> Mrs. Williamson. Oh. Oh, I didn't know you were still here, Mr. Jackson. But I didn't mean to intrude. I, I started to leave when I saw this. What? This, uh, painting. Oh, that. Yes, I, I tried to paint a picture of D.G. once. Well, it might be an interesting angle. Yes. Very good. Perfect for the child and the family. I don't know what you mean. Well, a portrait of a child by her mother. And you know something else? 
This picture is almost an American primitive, just like a Grandma Moses. You mean my picture really on the cover? Might be arranged. Mother. Call me Grandma Penny. Mother, mother, mother. Oh, what is it, Sue? My lizard eggs. They all hatch. Lizards are all over the place. <laughs> Mr. Jackson, excuse me. I'm right back to where I left off this morning. Certainly. Sue, what did I tell you about keeping things in your room? You never mention eggs even once. <laughs> oh, dear, we'll start over. No lizard, no lizard eggs, no toad, no toad eggs, no tiger, no tiger eggs, no lion, no lion eggs, no rat, no rat. Did you know you can spend years in Las Vegas and never see a slot machine or a roulette wheel? But if you're in the mood for games, some miles southwest is truth or consequences. Now, I'm not talking about Las Vegas, Nevada, or a TV audience participation show, uh-uh, but about two towns in New Mexico, an area which has been inhabited by man for at least 10,000 years. Santa Fe, the capital of New Mexico, is the oldest capital city in the United States, and there stands the oldest house in the United States, on De Vargas Street. Not far from Santa Fe, on a broad sweep of the Rio Grande, lies Albuquerque, a city of streets lined with cottonwoods, tamarisks, and poplars. It wasn't so very long ago, you know, that Billy the Kid roamed the territory, now explored by tourists visiting Carlsbad Caverns or that Geronimo wreaked havoc in a state which now houses the nation's largest Navajo Indian reservation. And the roadrunner still races across the desert as he has for centuries. New Mexico. (laughs) A land of enchantment as old as time itself. Yet as modern as tomorrow's rockets, developed and tested at White Sands. Penny Singleton Show features Gail Gordon, Jim Backus, Sarah Selby, B. Benaderet, Louise Fitch, Bill Johnstone, Mary Lee Robb, Sheila James, and Dick Ryan. The music was composed and conducted by Von Dexter. The Penny Singleton Show is written and directed by Robert Soderbergh and stars Penny Singleton. Good night. Keep well. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Penny Singleton Show. (laughs) On stage tonight from Hollywood, the Penny Singleton Show.
first visit to our show, I suppose I should explain that in our story, I am Mrs. Penny Williamson. The little city I live in is called Middleton. It's a peaceful city, and I live on a peaceful street. Mother! I wish I could say the same about my house. Oh, dear, the telephone. Excuse me, just a moment. Mother, please come upstairs. It's an emergency. It always is. Margaret, could you answer I'm the... in the middle of getting breakfast. Mother! Dee Dee, I've got to answer I'll the phone. I'll answer it, Mrs. Williamson. Oh, thank you, Margaret. Mother, please! I'm coming, Dee Dee. Hello, Williamson residence. No, this is the cook, and I'm right in the middle of... Huh? What radio program am I listening to? <laughs> At the moment, I'm enjoying the adventures of Nurse Marilyn Marble, all-American hot water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got time to listen? What? Information? There's four of us. Me, Mrs. Williamson, and the two kids. Gigi, she's going on 13, and Sue, she's 8. And now, if you'll please... No. No, Mrs. Williamson's a widow. The war, yes. Now, if you'll please... No, we don't have a television set. With two kids, who needs Milton Berle? <laughs> All right, Deejee, what did Sue do now? Well, it was horrible, Mother, just horrible. I reached into the bathtub for a piece of soap, and I picked up a turtle. Oh, Sue Williamson... Come right out here this minute. Mother, are you absolutely certain they didn't switch babies on you in the hospital? <laughs> I'm positive. Sue? I'm coming. Dee Gee, hurry up and get dressed. What do you want, Mother? She wants to know why your turtle was in the bathtub. He needed exercise. I'll handle this, Dee Gee. Go get dressed. No wonder I'm a wreck at 13. Now, Sue... We've had talks before about what goes in the bathtub, haven't we? Yes, we have. And what decision did we reach? We decided that we wouldn't put goldfish in the bathtub. Well? This is different. Gregory Peck is a turtle. <laughs> I don't want any living things in the bathtub from now on. Does that include D.G.? <laughs> of course it does. Sometimes I don't think you appreciate how nice it is to have an older sister. When I was your age, your Aunt June was my older sister, and we had wonderful fun together. Didn't she mind if you kept pets in your room? Well, she... Well, now that I think of it, there was some trouble about a white mouth I had. Did she ever tell on you if, just by accident, you had a turtle or something in the bathtub? Oh, I don't think she... As a matter of fact, your grandfather once sent me a baby alligator from Florida. Yes, she had hysterics. I had it in the wash basin, though. Did she ever get all silly and mad if one of your pets got loose in her bedroom, like my lizard did last week? I never had a lizard, but one night my frog hopped into bed with her. Oh, she raised the roof. She screamed, and the whole family came rushing in, and I ended up with a spanking. Imagine a spanking just because a tiny little frog. What were you saying about Aunt June? I was saying that a girl is very lucky to have an older sister. Let's go have breakfast. <laughs> Morning, Margaret. Good morning. Where's Deejee? She'll be right down. Oh. Thank you. Oh, Margaret, you have a different hairdo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like it. I've been wondering about getting a short bob like that myself. Charmaine do it for you? Uh-huh. She says it's her most popular new hairdo. She calls it the 1929 crash bob. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you like it? Nah. When my boyfriend saw it last night, my stock crashed, too. <laughs> well, eggs will be right in. What takes D.G. so long? D.G.? I'm coming. Mother, did you talk to Sue about the T-U-R-T-L-E? 
Yes, she D.I.D. <laughs> Everything settled. If we'd gone on that picnic Sunday, Gregory Peck wouldn't need exercising. I'm sorry about that. But I had to show some properties, and the clients were free only on Sunday. You worked on Sunday twice in a row, Mother. I know. Come to think of it, why didn't Mr. Wiggins take last Sunday? Why does the Williamson of Williamson and Wiggins always get stuck? Mother, is he smarter than you are? No. Wait a minute. We'll have that picnic, and we'll have it today. I'll just tell Mr. Wiggins I'm taking today off. Oh, Mother... But first, I have to stop at the office and pick up some property deeds, and then I have to return them to the city hall. I promised Judge Grundle I'd have them back this morning. It won't take me an hour. Half of it will be spent arguing with Mr. Wiggins. There'll be no arguments. Mother, hmm? is there any danger of you ever marrying him? Oh, he's just a friend and a business partner. I'd rather have Judge Grundle. If you girls don't mind, I'll make my own mistakes. <laughs> Gigi, would you answer the door? Oh, it's Mrs. Duncan. Mother, she's holding some of your morning mail up against the sunlight. Oh, dear. Let her in, Gigi. We're in the dining room, Mrs. Duncan. Oh, good morning, Penny. And Sue. Good morning, Ida. I just came over to borrow some white thread. Oh, here's your morning mail. Picked it up on the porch. Oh, and thank you for sorting it out. <laughs> Quite a few bills. Three of them. And a letter from your sister. There is? How is she? Oh, she says she's just fine at... <laughs> I'm sure I don't know what you mean. My, we certainly missed you at the church supper Sunday night. <laughs> I'd worked all day. I was exhausted. Well, anyway, Judge Grundle was there with his mother. He looked absolutely lost without you. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, people were wondering why you weren't with him. Of course, some people thought you'd given him the go-by for Mr. Wiggins. <laughs> My, people will talk, won't they? Some people. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I wished I'd owned a kitten. Excuse me, Ida. Well, Sue, will you be glad when school's out? Yes, Mrs. Duncan. Hello. Oh, hello, Mrs. Foster. Oh, we're going on a picnic today. Oh. I know, but you I... You are? That's nice. I'm picnic. taking Gregory. He needs exercise. I'm oh, sure. What? Hmm, I am uh, wondering if we're today. making too much noise. Oh, right. oh Mother can hear all right, Mrs. Duncan. I know, but I can't. <laughs> I know Who is it she's talking to? Uh, the counselor at the train, and we'll is it a man or, or a woman? All right. Bye. Hmm. Who was it, Penny? Isabel Foster. Oh, I suppose she called to tell you about her husband. Everybody's talking about it. When he came home from work one evening last week, she found a long red hair on his coat lapel. <laughs> Maybe he stopped to pet a collie. <laughs> she didn't call me about that. Well, was it about her brother-in-law? They say, you know, that he... It wasn't about her brother-in-law. Well, my goodness, Penny. Aren't you going to tell me what it was? Are you going to keep it from me, your dearest friend? Yes, Ida, I am. Oh. <laughs> well, well, I must be going then. I've got a million things to do. Don't you want your white thread? What white thread? <laughs> Never mind, Ida. Oh, well, I I'll let myself out. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Gosh, she certainly left in a hurry. What was the matter? Oh, nothing's the matter. She's running back to her house so she can call Mrs. Foster. Oh, did Mrs. Foster have something awful to tell you? Oh, no, dear. <laughs> she just reminded me that I'm the committee to meet the new summer camp counselor this morning. I'll pick her up at the station and take her on the picnic, too. If she's anything like the woman we had last year, she'll love going with us. What's her name? I don't know, dear. I didn't go to the last meeting. Oh, dear. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Mrs. Duncan phoning Isabel Foster. Ida's day will be wrecked when she finds out there's nothing to find out. <laughs> Well, Mrs. Foster, as one of Penny's dearest friends, I was worried. Yes, I, I was just over there, and she looked so, uh, well, so odd after you called. I was afraid there was some sort of trouble, and... What? Oh. Oh, she just has to meet the new camp counselor. Ah. Well, I I'm glad it was nothing more than just meeting the new woman who... What? The new camp counselor is a man... <laughs> does, uh, <clears throat> does Penny know this? Oh, if she was at the last meeting, she does, hmm? 
Oh, a man. Oh, what? Uh, no, no, I, I wondered why she was so secretive, and I... Oh, my dear, well, uh, goodbye, dear. I've got a million things to attend to. Tennessee, home of the Volunteers, Grand Old Opry, and TVA, the support of mighty dams which harness the power of myriad rivers and create miles of blue lakes where the cat, the crappie, and the sunfish wait to bait the summer angler. This is the state of the Great Smokies, advertised by a thousand and one signs. See seven states from Rock City, but characterized by towns like Spot, large enough to be just that on the map. In Tennessee is the site of the Hermitage, a palatial estate of white columns and red brick which housed Andrew Jackson, but also the site of a humble cabin which was the home of Sam Davis, boy hero of the Confederacy. Tennessee is ever a state of mind, clinging to glory that once was while reaching out for glory that may be, a state through which the Tennessee Central Number 9 still thunders, and in which, at Shiloh, at Murfreesboro, at Chickamauga, the rusty cannonballs lie silent, stacked forevermore in ordered number. And now for Act Two of the Penny Singleton Show. It's just a few minutes later, and we find ourselves in the real estate agency of Williamson and Wiggins, where Penny works. Mr. Wiggins is already there, and wait a minute, so is Ida Duncan. Oh, I hope you realize, Mr. Wiggins, I only told you this because I know how you feel about dear, dear Penny, and I... Uh, let me get this straight, Ida. She's going to phone me and tell me she's going to take the day off? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you tell me the whole thing's a cover-up so she can meet this new swoon goon? Yes, yes. Well, I, I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. She's always been open and above board with me. Never any subterfuge with Penny. Well, won't you call it subterfuge if she pretends to you that the new camp counselor is a woman? Well, I... No. Uh, I, uh... Oh, well, I must be running along. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Wiggins. Oh, uh, uh, Ida, Ida. You're uh, not going to tell this to anyone else, are you? Oh, you don't know me very well, do you? I wouldn't breathe a word of it. <laughs> Don't know her very well. Huh. It's not true. Not a word of it. Only competition I've got is Judge Grundle. <laughs> she doesn't want him for us. Horace, you're pacing. Stop it. Stop it, Wiggins boy. You wouldn't believe anything a gossip like Ida Duncan. You're not upset, Wiggy lad. <laughs> If you were really upset, you'd be talking out loud to your... Uh... <laughs> now, sit down. Sit down. Now, take it easy. Relax. You, you, you don't believe her. You, you, you don't believe Ida Duncan. You just don't believe her. Horace! <laughs> now, sit down. There. Good morning, Mr. Wiggins. Oh, Penny, thank goodness you've come. What? Well, I, I, I can't explain to you, but more dependent on your coming in today than any other day in the whole year. Well, I'm glad because I'm going to take the day off. I mean, just before you came in, I... Oh. <laughs> oh, Mr. Wiggins, what's the matter? You look as pale as a drain thermometer. No, no. No, no, everything's all right. I just want to sit down. Why are you taking the day off? Well, I've been... Ne neglecting the children lately. Yes. Yeah. 
Oh, Mr. Wiggins, I never realized you were so observant and understanding and dear. Yeah. <laughs> There's just one thing I have to do. I promised Judge Grenville to return these deeds to the courthouse this morning. Uh, uh, Penny. Yes? Are just you and the children taking the day off? Oh, no. I'm taking the new camp counselor on a picnic. It'll make a nice first day in town for her. Her. See you tomorrow, Mr. Wiggins. Her. Oh, doggone it, I'm not going to take this her business lying down. Ida, have you told this story to anyone else? Why, Judge Grendel, you certainly don't know me very well. <laughs> if Wiggins knew about this camp council, it would certainly serve him right. <laughs> Yeah, but it's not doing me any good either. Oh, you poor, poor man. Uh, that's where you're wrong, Ida. As a judge, I've had to face truth. I've had to face facts. The man who faces the truth and facts is a man who knows no fear. I am not afraid. Oh, uh, there, there, there's Penny coming up the corridor now. Oh. Morning, Judge. Hello again, Ida. Oh, hello, dear. I, I wish I could stay, but I must run. <laughs> Bye. <coughs> good morning, Penny. Mm -hmm. Bye, Ida. Well, here are the deeds I promised to return, Judge Grendel. Why are you staring at me? Is something wrong? <clears throat> uh, Penny? Yes? You've always known me as a man who faces facts, haven't you? I guess so. I've never thought about it. You've known me as a man who faces the truth. I think truth and facts are the same thing. Uh, yes, 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 they are. Ergo, as a man who faces the truth, faces facts, it follows I'm not afraid of truth. And facts. Judge, are you running for something this election? <laughs> Please. So, if I, Bessemer Grundle, am not afraid of truth, you, Penny Williamson, should never worry about telling me the truth, right? Right. Good. Now remember, I am not afraid. Now, for a direct question. Shoot. Are you planning to spend the day with the new summer camp counselor? I'll answer that question. No, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Don't tell me. Well, I won't then. Goodbye, Judge Grundle. Oh, you were afraid, Bessemer. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, pull yourself together. You'll go down standing up. <laughs> The train's already in. Gee, I wish we knew what the camp counselor looked like. Just stop the first woman you see wearing sensible shoes. Well, I'll yell if I find her. All right, dear. Now, I'll take this. Oh, uh, there you are, Penny. Why, Mr. Wiggins. Penny, I'm here for your best interests. Well, I'm sure, but I don't understand. Judge Grundle. Uh, Penny, I thought it over, and a young, pretty widow like yourself needs... Oh. <laughs> Hello, Grundle. Hello, Wigan. <laughs> Just a second, please. By any chance, are you two following me? I wish you'd explain. Well, well Ida, Ida Duncan... Uh, Ida Duncan? Did, uh, Ida Duncan tell you, Grundle? She told you, Wiggins? Told both of you what? She told me the new summer camp counselor was a man. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Now I know why you both behave so oddly. Oh, everything I said, you twisted around. Oh, well, this should serve both of you right for ever believing anything Ida Duncan tells you. Well, you mean that she was just... You know you should be ashamed of yourselves. To think that in all the years you've known me, to think you'd believe I'd try to deceive either one of you. I like both of you very much. And you should know I'd never do anything to hurt or upset you. I feel like a heel. <laughs> I don't know if I can ever again face that portrait of George Washington in my courtroom. <laughs> Mother. Why, DG, yes? This is the new camp counselor. How do you do, Mrs. Williamson? 
Henry! <laughs> Holy torpedo. The name's Harrison, Frank Harrison. And your daughter tells me I'm going on a picnic. Well, I... I... We are all going on a picnic. <laughs> Beautiful day. Perfect for the picnic, Mr. Harrison. Oh, I like the country around Middleton. Remember, I'm on the market for more turtles if anybody sees one. <laughs> My goodness, Judge Grendel and Mr. Wiggins have fallen way behind. Oh, Judge! We'll be right along, Penny. We're having a little talk. It's a shame you have to carry all those lunch baskets, Mr. Harrison. May I help? Oh, no, no, they're not heavy. Now, look, Wiggins, no matter what our personal feelings about each other are, you've got to admit we're both faced with the same problem. You mean, uh, Rover Boy up there? <laughs> well, actually, there's just one thing he's got that we haven't. Muscles? No, youth. That's where we've got to fight him. We've got to show Penny that even though we may have more mature minds, we are still young in heart. I don't know about being young in heart, but we've, uh, we've got to wear him down, huh? And between the two of us, we should be able to do it. Well, let's walk a little faster and catch up with it. Walk them. nothing. We're going to run, kiddo. <laughs> I think they're just, just around the turn. Uh, yeah, they have better be. Oh, here you are, Judge Grendel. Uh, and Mr. Wiggins. Uh, uh, don't worry, men. We've only got two more miles to go. Who's, who's worried? <laughs> Mr. Wiggins, you look purple. It's very becoming, Mr. Wiggins. <laughs> Everybody, we want to get there before late afternoon. Uh, Mr. Harrison, you've led hikes before. You set the pace. For oh, no, no, no. I'll, I'll set the pace. After all, we want to get there. <laughs> we'll set the pace, Wiggins. Uh, I meant we, Judge. Yeah. Uh, come on there, Harrison. Don't straggle behind. One, two, three, four. Hunt, two, three, four. Hunt, two, three, four. Four, Mother? <laughs> Judge, Mr. Wiggins, I think you're overdoing a little. Overdoing nothing. Come on, Mr. Harrison. Don't straggle. What are you looking back for, Judge? He's up ahead. There's a log over the stream. We can cross on that. I'm going to let Gregory Peck swim a little. Why, Mr. Harrison, do you need a log to cross this stream? Well, it's uh, been a couple of years since I did any broad jumping. Ah, uh, the youth of today. <laughs> it's been quite a few years since I was the champion broad jumper at Chicago. But my generation... Well, I mean... <laughs> oh, Judge, you're not going to play leapfrog over this babbling brook. Uh, just stand back. Uh, I, I think it's a little too wide, Judge. Oh, oh, oh nonsense. What? Go ahead, Judge. <laughs> just, just get a little running start. Yeah, that's all I need. <laughs> oh, Judge Brundle. Gregory. <laughs> Getting deeper. Why don't we rest a bit before we do the last hitch? <laughs> rest? <laughs> rest? You're not tired, Miss Harrison? Well, <laughs> a young I, uh... fellow like you, tired. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Penny? I'm just getting my second win. Ever wrestle, Mr. Harrison? <laughs> not while I'm taking a break. <laughs> hear that, Judge? <laughs> yes. Come on, Judge, you and I wrestle. <laughs> Oh, it's all right. Oh, but Judge, you're still wet from the stream, and I... Come on, Judge. All right. Oh. <laughs> what was that, Wiggins? Well, I don't know. It sounded like it could have been... My sacro! 
Lillian! Oh, dear. Oh, Mr. Mr. Wiggins. Oh, don't touch me. Oh, Judge Grendel. I can't stop it. Oh, Oh, I can't move. Oh, dear. Uh, I'd better run back to town and get an ambulance. For both of them. the doctor, Judge Grendel, and Mr. Wiggins. He thinks he can have you both out of the hospital in a couple of days. Uh, Ow, you're shaking the room. (laughs) How are they feeling? Better. Judge, Mr. Wiggins, I think both of you should thank Mr. Harrison for getting the ambulance so quickly yesterday. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Sorry you two are going to be laid up. I wanted to have a dinner party for you tomorrow night so you could meet my wife. She arrives tomorrow. Your what? Your wife? You, uh, mean you're married? Yes. Well, drop by and see you tomorrow. So long. I'll be right out, Mr. Harrison. Well, boys, outside of feeling miserable, don't you both feel a little foolish? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, what a pair. Anyway, Mr. Wiggins, because of you, Sue got 100% in spelling for her final exam this morning. Me? Well, what did I have to do with it? Oh, because of what's happened to you, she knew how to spell sacroiliac. Oh, don't do When I was a child, I used a little spelling game to remember Mississippi. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. Remember? (laughs) Now, of course, I remember Mississippi in other ways, for other things. I remember Faulkner and Yoknipatawtha County, the aristocratic old plantations of Natchez, shrimp boats setting out from Biloxi. Many of you, too, must remember watching the oystermen off the shores of Pass Christiane or cotton pickers in Greenville attending the Delta Staple Cotton Festival in Clarksdale, patting the Spanish moss on the giant oaks. Mississippi stirs remembrances in most people, even those who have never visited the Magnolia State. For the history and the name of the state, and, yes, even the spelling game, make us stop to think and to ponder the wisdom behind the state motto, By Valor and Arms. Penny Singleton Show features Gail Gordon, Jim Backus, Sarah Selby, B. Benaderet, Mary Lee Robb, Sheila James, and Tom Brown. The music was composed and conducted by Von Dexter. The Penny Singleton Show is written and directed by Robert Soderbergh and stars Penny Singleton. Good night. Keep well. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.
The Penny Singleton Show. Hello. Happy that you're here. On stage tonight from Hollywood, The Penny Singleton Show. In our story, Penny is Mrs. Penny Williamson, a war widow and the mother of two girls, 13-year-old D.G. and 8-year-old Sue. As Penny says, they are growing and changing so fast that she sometimes feels as if she has a new set of children every 24 hours. She is up in her room tidying up for dinner now as Margaret, her cook, calls upstairs. Dinner's ready, Mrs. Williamson. All right, Margaret, I'll call the girls. They're in their room. Mother, don't take another staff. Why, Sue, I didn't know you were in the hall. Is D.G. in her room? Yes, but please, don't staff. D.G., dinner. All right, Mother. Oh, Sue, why are you crawling around the floor? Bert Lancaster got loose. Bert Lancaster. <laughs> Which or what is Bert Lancaster? My bullfrog. He hopped out here and I can't find him. <laughs> I thought you promised D.G. you wouldn't keep frogs in your room anymore. You know how she feels. She doesn't mind anymore. Since when? Did you say dinner, Mother? Yes, D.G. I'm sorry your sister forgot her promise about frogs. What frogs? Be careful where you walk, D.G. All right. You see, Mother? Yes. I've never seen her like that. I got frogs in the bedroom. She's got bats in the belfry. <laughs> That's no way to... Come on, let's go down to dinner. We've got to find Bert first, please. Oh, all right. Well, I don't see him. He must be hiding. We'll have to give him the lady frog love call. What's that? Gunk. He'll answer if he gets interested. Well, um, how do you tell a lady frog's call from a man frog's? I don't know, but the bullfrogs sure do. Boom. 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 It's obvious you do nothing to Bert. He thinks of me more as a friend. Uh, you try, Mother. Oh, good heavens. He'll answer if he likes you. Oh, but... Oh, well. Gong? Uh, there he is. I see him. Gosh, Mother, you sure got frog appeal. <laughs> Hurry down to dinner, Sue. All right. I'll go on ahead and try to find out what's wrong with D.G. <laughs> D.G., you're hardly touching your food. I'm just not hungry. Do you feel all right? Oh, I feel... I feel wonderful. You do? Anybody want more vegetables? No, thanks, Margaret. No, thanks. Sue, you haven't touched your Brussels sprouts. What's the matter with them, Sue? Nothing, Mother. I just don't like them. All good little girls eat Brussels sprouts, Sue. <laughs> Name one. <laughs> you haven't eaten any either, D.G. Well, I'm not... Do you two kids realize where Belgium would be today if people didn't eat their Brussels sprouts? <laughs> no, Where? That's a good question. <laughs> I'll get your tea. Oh, oh, Mrs. Williamson, would you mind if I just rinsed and stacked the dishes tonight? My friend Leonard Frybacker wants to take me to the drive-in movies. Of course not. What picture are you going to see? I don't know. When you go to a drive-in movie with Leonard Frybacker, who cares what's playing? <laughs> well, enjoy yourself. Thank you. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, I, I think I told Judge Grendel I'd go to the movies with him tonight. Well, we can go tomorrow night when Margaret's home. Mother, can I go swimming again tomorrow? Yes, if D.G. will take you again. Will you, D.G.? D.G.? D.G., I'm talking to you. What? Oh, I don't care for any more Brussels sprouts, thank you. <laughs> now, really, what is the matter with you? She's in love with the dreamboat she met at the beach. Sue, you promised. Every time he flicked a muscle, she died. <laughs> Sue! Uh, D.G., you like someone? <laughs> My goodness, why do you want to make a secret of that? Mother, I don't think you understand. I like him a lot, but I'm sure he doesn't even give me the slightest thought. His name is Tommy Trammell, and let's face it, He's an older man. Oh, dear. How old is he? Do you know? He's 15. <laughs> oh. Early 15 or late? Late. I see. It seems so hopeless. That's why I didn't want to talk about it. 
He probably asked someone and found out I was a mere 13. But you left the beach bag. What did you do? Well, I deliberately left my beach bag. I arranged with Lois to tell him after I left that it was mine, and then she was going to tell him where I lived. I was hoping he'd return it, but she probably told him I was 13 and grabbed him for herself. Tommy Trammell. I think I know his mother and father. They're very nice people. Thank you, Mother, but real honest love has to happen all by itself. Well, I belong to the school of thought that believes in helping it along a little. Come on, let's do the dishes for Margaret tonight. Just a few more and we're done. And then you're off to bed, Sue. All right. Here's the last dish, Deejee. Thanks. That does it. Oh, Mother, maybe that's... Oh, Mother. Oh, that's all right. Go ahead and answer the door. Help me pick up the pieces, Sue. Boy, love sure is rough on dishes. <laughs> yes, I'd better start using the old china. Am I going to be goony about boys someday? Mm-hmm. What a future. <laughs> well, I guess we got all the pieces. Let's go see if Tommy's here. Sure hope so. She's been easy to live with ever since she saw him today. D.G., is that... It's your... only Judge Grundle. Oh, what a joyous welcome. It's only Judge Grundle. Hello, Judge. Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Hello, Judge Grundle. Hello, my dear little Susan. I'm going up to my room, Mother. All right, dear. And, Sue, I think you'd better get to bed. You've had a long day. All right. Judge Grundle? Yes? Did you know Mother had frog appeal? <laughs> Frog appeal? Oh, I imitated a frog and her bullfrog answered. <laughs> I went, gunk. <laughs> oh, well, Penny, you appeal to me, too. Gunk. <laughs> you see? Gee, you're as cute as Burt Lancaster, Judge. Oh, uh, well, that's Burt. <laughs> Burt Lancaster. Well, now that you mention it, I suppose there is a definite resemblance. <laughs> well, maybe you do look like him a little bit. Uh, well, thank you, Susan. I'm delighted you see the similarity. Too bad your mother isn't so observant. You should be glad I'm not because Bert Lancaster is her bullfrog. <laughs> oh. Good night. Good night, dear. I'll be up in a minute. Uh, good night. Judge, I gave Margaret the evening off so we could go out tomorrow night instead of tonight. Would you mind just visiting here? Penny, I'd like to visit here 365 nights of the year. I know, Judge. Judge, Judge, if you'd only call me by my first name, I'd have some hope. But I... Uh, try uh, it, Penny. Go ahead. Call me Bessemer. <laughs> uh, oh, Judge, I... There I... you go with Judge again. All right, if you only think of me as a judge, let me put my proposal this way. Let me sentence you for life. Oh, dear, but I don't believe in capital punishment. <laughs> well, marrying me would not be capital punishment. It would be life imprisonment. I, I don't mean that marrying me would be life imprisonment. I mean that if you married uh, me... Judge, when I sent it... judge, hmm? you're saved by the bell. Excuse me. Oh, Mother, is that... I don't know, dear. I'll have to open the door first. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is this where D.G. Williamson lives? Yes, I'm Mrs. Williamson. I'll bet you're Tommy Trammell. Come on in. Uh, hello. Uh, D.G. left her beach bag and Oh, I... go on into the living room. I'll call her. Thank you. D.G., it's Tommy Trammell. <laughs> Whom did you say was calling, Mother? He's in the living room. Here she is, Tommy. Uh, hello, D.G. You left your beach bag and I... Oh, it's so nice of you to return it. Uh, have you met Judge Grendel, Tommy? Yes, I have. Uh, is that a ukulele you have there? Yes, sir. Oh, my goodness. Ukuleles are back, aren't they? Well, all the ancient things are back, Mother. Jazz, the old songs, ukuleles, the Charleston. Can you play it, Tommy? Well, I'm just learning, uh, but I'm this far. My dog has fleas. <laughs> Gosh. He's very talented, isn't he, Mother? <laughs> Can you play it, D.G.? Well, I've learned a little. Would you like to go out in the front porch and practice? Well, sure. My, that's just what we used to do. Come on. You know, you seem older now than you did at the beach. Is that bad?
Digi's first boyfriend. My, how time flies. <laughs> Thank you. Tomorrow night for sure? Oh, of course. Oh, and I'll invite a few of our mutual friends. We can have a Charleston party. You're sure you don't have to ask your mother first? Well, I'll consult with her, but I'm at the age now where Mother doesn't treat me like a, like a child anymore. Oh, I'm glad you are. I prefer older women. If there's anything I hate, it's kids' parties. You know, with mothers and fathers always hanging around. Oh, I do, too. I'm at the age now where Mother trusts me. You're keen and old. Thank you We don't mean to interrupt, but Judge Grundle is just leaving Oh, I was just going too It's been swell, D.G. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Williamson uh, Judge Grundle yeah, Good night Good night, Tommy Night Good night I'll see you tomorrow night at the party All right, good night Oh, what party is that, dear? Well, Mother, could I have some friends in tomorrow night for a Charleston party? But, darling, I'm going out with Horace Wiggins tomorrow night. Oh, oh, no, 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 with me, Penny. Oh, no, I accepted Mr. Wiggins' invitation for dinner and... Holy torpedo. I told you I... Oh, dear. Uh, oh, no, they, I'm, but, Mother, oh. it's all right if you go out. <laughs> Mother, I want Tommy to think I'm older than 13. Penny, how could you do this to me? Well, you know my friends, Mother, and if there's parents around, Tommy will think I'm a mere child. But, Judge, I forgot. And, D.G., I just don't know. Mother, my whole future's at stake. Now, D.G. Horace Wiggins, to think that you could do this to me. Now, Judge. Mother, if you do this to me, I just don't think I can go on. D.G., don't talk like that. Go to your room. I refuse to accept the change of plans. I'll see you tomorrow night. But, Mother, I don't care if I ever see you again, Leonard Crybacker. <laughs> D.G., I'll talk to you in the morning. I may not live until morning. Oh, dear. Oh, Mrs. Williamson. Margaret, you're not in trouble, too. It was terrible. We went to the drive-in. We parked where there weren't many other cars. We turned off the lights. I moved closer to him. And then... Sounds all right so far. And then what? Betty Grable! <laughs> In color, too! Oh, what a life. This land is yours. For all that we tend to group Nebraska with one or another of the states, the Cornhusker state has many characteristics which are strictly its own. Since 1875, for example, Nebraska has been a debt-free state, which preferred to spend ten years building the capital at Lincoln rather than spend money it didn't have. Further, as its name may indicate, corn is its most important crop. And Omaha's stockyards are among the largest in the world. Then there's historic Chimney Rock near Bayard and the town of Alliance, which was once almost sold by the Burlington Lines Railroad. Many years of tears and Indian wars and hardships such as the Grasshopper Plague contributed to the words which are engraved upon the capital. Honor to pioneers who broke the sods that men to come might live. Nebraskans live by these words, and they live for them. <laughs> And now for Act Two of the Penny Singleton Show. It's early the next morning as Penny enters the office of the Williamson and Wiggins Real Estate Agency. Her partner, Horace Wiggins, is already at the office as Penny enters. Good morning, Penny. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Mr. Wiggins. You're in earlier than usual. Oh, I couldn't help it. Woke up this morning at 7, heard the birds singing, saw the sun shining, bounced out of bed ready to tackle a full day. Why, well, even threw the window wide open and did calisthenics. Then you came right to work. No, I had to go back to bed to recuperate. 
But even so, I couldn't help getting here early, you know. I feel like a million now. Uh, you're early, too. Did this beautiful day do the <laughs> same thing to you? No, it didn't. Between Dee Dee and Margaret at breakfast this morning, I had to get out early. Oh, Penny, are you going to let something depress you on a beautiful, wonderful day like this? Yes. Well, now, if you weren't depressed, I bet you have a different attitude about things. I mean, like, uh... <laughs> well, for example, even marrying me. I would. Well, sure you would. Now, let's tackle each little problem. Clear it up, then you'll start the day with a smile. Now, first of all, what's the matter with Margaret? All the time she was serving breakfast, she kept mumbling, what's Betty Grable got that I haven't got? I hope you didn't tell her. <laughs> Mr. Wiggins, Margaret cuts a very nice figure of a woman. Yeah, but the scissors slipped in several places. <laughs> she had a fight last night with Leonard something or other. Oh, oh, now you know these things don't last more than a day with Margaret. Now, let's tackle the next problem. What is the matter with D.G.? Well, I realize that at 13, everything is a matter of life or death. Mm -hmm. She's just fallen in love for the first time. Well? And it seems absolutely imperative that she prove something by having a small party tonight without a parent around. Since you and I were going out, I didn't feel that that uh, was... Uh, will, uh, will Margaret be home? Yes. Of course, I know all of D.G.'s friends. They're nice youngsters. Well, Margaret takes care of the children while you work. She'll be doing the same thing if she keeps her eye on the party. I guess I just didn't want to face the fact that D.G.'s growing up. <laughs> there you are. All your problems taken care of. Yes. Uh, now then, as I was saying before, about you and me, if oh, we Oh, wait, could... there is one more problem, and... And this one concerns you. Well, come on, come on. Let's let's have it. Get the problem over with so we can talk about you. Well, I, I got confused and mixed up about dates. And, um, well, um, Judge Grundle's going to be with us tonight, too. <laughs> oh. Well, I told you all my problems, and you were right. I feel much better. And for the first time, I realize it really is a beautiful day. I think it's going to rain. Then it's all right, Mother? Yes, dear. Let's see. It's almost seven. Mr. Wiggins and Judge Grundle should be here soon. The kids are coming at seven, too. Can I be at the party? Sue, you may watch the party from the stairs. Till 8.30. Okay. 8.30. Mm -hmm. I want my friends to meet her. They think she's cute. Oh, Cut it out. I'll answer it. Mother, I'm sorry I got upset and childish last night. Don't worry about it. Hello, Sue. Mother's in the living room, Mr. Wiggins. Hello, Mr. Wiggins. Hello, D.G. Hello, Penny. Hello, I'm ready. Just as soon as Judge Grundle gets here. Yes, it's going to be great taking the two of you dancing. <laughs> I'm having a wonderful party tonight, Mr. Wiggins. We're going to do the Charleston. Tommy's bringing his uke, and Jack Randall's bringing drums, and George Stern plays the piano. It's going to be a real Charleston party. It's the thing, you know. That's Judge Grundle. We'll meet him at the door and leave right away. Have a nice time, Dee Dee. Oh, we'll have a super time, Mother. See you later. <laughs> My, this is a good steak. Is yours good, Judge Grundle? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Wiggins, yours too? Yeah. I'm... I'm glad. I think it's fun, the three of us going out together. Don't you, Judge Grundle? Yes. Yeah. And Mr. Wiggins? Yeah. I love the Middleton Inn. It's the only really nice dining, dancing place in town. Do you two agree? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm certainly glad you're both... You're both having fun. I'm having a lot of fun. A lot of fun? <laughs> that Wiggins. The way he looks at Penny. Like a lovesick pickerel. <laughs> You're, uh, enjoying yourself, aren't you, Mr. Wiggins? Hmm? Oh, yes. How can I enjoy myself with that habeas corpus sitting across from me? <laughs> what a judge. When he wears his robes, he looks like a black teepee. <laughs> oh. 
The orchestra is going to play. Uh, may, may I have, I have this, this dance, dance Penny? Now look here, Grant. You look here. I now was, please, uh, gentlemen. Really, I, I I don't care to dance. I I really just don't care to dance. <laughs> Does anyone know what time it is? 9.30. 9.30? Why, we've been here for two hours. My, how the time has flown. Like glue. <laughs> like molasses. Yes, it certainly has been fun. Oh, I'll bet they're having fun at home. Fun at home. Gentlemen, uh, yeah. I want you to know that this has been an evening I shall never forget. I started it, so I'm going to end it. Take me home, both of you. Well, look, everybody, let's try playing the Charleston again. Maybe we can get together this time. They'll never get together enough so we can dance or have fun. Well, we'll try. George, try it on the piano. Tommy, play it on the uke. Give it to me. I can't help it if I don't know it. George, I can't play the drums the way you're playing the piano. George, stop that piano. Wait a minute, I was just... Maybe somebody knows some of the old songs. Let's get some life in the party. All I can play is... <laughs> what a party. Well, it's not my fault if none of you know how to do the things you came over to do. I thought we were going to have fun. Excuse me, I think it's Mother. Oh, no, not her mother. Oh, jeez. Oh, Mother. I forgot my key, dear. D.G., what's the matter? Sorry about tonight, I... I'm sorry, too. D.G., what's the trouble? The party's just awful. Awful? Where's Sue? She got bored and went to bed at eight. Uh, uh, D.G., what, what's wrong with the party? Oh, come in, please. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows how to do anything we plan to do. Uh, and... Let's all go into the living room. Kids. Oh, no. <laughs> the party's just dying, and I'm so ashamed that Mother's just awful. Oh, hello, Mrs. Williamson. Hello, Tommy, Jack, Hi. Lois, George. I guess you all know Judge Grundle and Mr. Wiggins. Oh, oh sure. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Hey, uh, uh, whose drums are those? They're mine, Judge, but I'm not very good. Uh, what's this old song you were uh, playing on the piano? It's Ain't She Sweet. <laughs> Hey, Judge! <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Uh, Penny, they were singing Ain't She Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll never forget that one. Hey, that's good, Mr. Wiggins. Oh, hit it, Judge! Um, uh, Tommy, let me have your ukulele a minute. Start over, Mr. Wiggins. Okay, Penny. Take it, Judge. Uh, Ain't she sweet? See her coming down the street. Now I ask you very confidentially, Ain't she sweet? Come on, kids, sing it. This is great fun. I can't <laughs> The judge and Mr. Wiggins were so good. Oh, good nothing. And that's no banana oil. <laughs> boop, boop, ba -doo. Oh, Mr. Wiggins. <laughs> hey, I never knew old people could be so much fun. Boy, if we could only do the Charleston now, everything would be perfect. The Charleston? D.G., take the uke. You know this one. Uh, judge, you're uh, great on the drum. Horace, you make the piano tingle like Gilda Gray. Oh! Come on, boys, the Charleston! <laughs> It was a keen evening, D.G. Well, I'm glad you had fun, Tommy. I sure did. I wonder if... I wonder if I could ask your mother something. Oh, why, sure. Mother? Yes, D.G.? Mrs. Williamson? Tommy wants to ask you something. What? Well, I was wondering if maybe... 
If maybe when I come over again, you'd give me some Charleston lessons. And me too. Why, of course, any time. Oh, that's swell. D.G. and I'll be the best Charlestoners in town. Oh, good night, and thanks again. Night, Tommy. Night. See you at the beach tomorrow. Oh, he's a nice boy. Oh, Mother. If only you'd been here for the whole evening. I wish I had been. <laughs> I'm such a fool sometimes. Well, maybe someday I'll learn. All I can say now is thanks for being here. You're welcome, darling. And thank you for having us. You saved our lives, too. For a while, it looked like the judge and Mr. Wiggins and I would end up mortal enemies. Uh, rugs are all back down. Uh, everything's in shape, Penny. Thank you both. <laughs> Certainly had a great time. Didn't you, uh, grundle, old boy? <laughs> yes, I sure did, Horace. And thank you, D.G., and thank you, Penny. Thank you for coming. Glad you had fun. Uh, I'll walk away with you, Judge. Fine, fine, Horace, fine. <laughs> Good, Good night. night. Good night. Good night. Hey, she's sweet. The party was a real success. Aren't you glad we had the kids over at the house, Mother? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know which one is the younger, Judge Grundle or Horace Wiggins. The next time you put butter or sour cream on that big baked potato, give a thought to where it came from. Chances are that it was grown in Blackfoot or Haley or Buell or somewhere in Idaho. And the wool in your favorite sweater probably came from Ketchum or Shoshone. For that matter, Idaho is productively so versatile that whether you eat it, heat it, or wear it, it more than likely had its beginnings in Idaho. Idaho is well known for its beginnings and its durability. The Gem State's motto, May It Last, is not an idle one. Its forests and minerals have lasted as long as anyone can remember. And the great waterfalls and health-giving mineral springs, the awesome Bitterroot and Wasatch Ranges, the River of No Return, these promise to endure as long as man. <laughs> Penny Singleton Show features Gail Gordon, Jim Backus, Bea Benadera, Mary Lee Robb, and Sheila James, with Conrad Binion, Gloria McMillan, and Bobby Ellis. The music was composed and conducted by Von Dexter. The Penny Singleton Show is written and produced by Robert Soderbergh and stars Penny Singleton. Good night. Keep well. <laughs> This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.
Penny Singleton Show. Hello. Happy that you're here. <laughs> On stage, tonight from Hollywood, The Penny Singleton Show. Penny in our story is Mrs. Penny Williamson, war widow and the mother of two daughters, 13-year-old D.G. and 8-year-old Sue. In addition to raising her daughters and running a home, Penny works for a living. It's a full life and a hectic one, and as Penny says, sometimes she winds down. Tonight we find Penny completely wound down and looking forward with relish to a quiet evening. She's in the living room of her home reading to Sue. D.G. is lying on a nearby couch staring at the ceiling. And the wicked magician disappeared from the face of the earth leaving the princess to marry the prince. They lived happily ever after. If I'd been that princess, I'd have married the magician instead of the prince. Why? Well, if you were married to a magician... You could say, husband, I'd like some ice cream. Then he'd hocus-pocus, and there'd be the ice cream. That's what I call a husband. You know, useful. Sounds practical. (sighs) D.G., did you just say something? No, Mother. (sighs) D.G., what are you sighing about? Nothing, Mother, nothing. She looks as sad as a St. Bernard. (laughs) (laughs) To bed, Sue. Yes, D.G., you've been like this all evening. I felt like I was having dinner with Betty Davis. I'll bet it's Tommy Trammell. Sue, you keep out of this. Sue, I told you. All right. Good night, Mother. Good night, dear. And don't forget your prayers. I won't. Good night, Betty Davis. Sue! Oh, darling, she was just teasing. Is it Tommy Trammell? Please, Mother. All right, if you don't want to talk about it, don't. I would love having a nice, uncomplicated evening at home. It was so hectic in the office today. Mrs. Williamson, did a car just honk out front? I didn't hear one, Margaret. Oh, well, Leonard Frybacker was supposed to pick me up at 7.30. I told him I'd be through with the dishes by then. I've been dressed and waiting for 45 minutes now. He'll be along soon. Oh, is that a new dress, Margaret? Uh, I'm not sure how it fits. It's one of those California sportswear models. Looks cute. Mm, feels a little tight around Sacramento. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, is that you? No, this isn't your friendly 24-hour service plumber. You've got the wrong number. I think I'll wait outside. Leonard should be along. Fiji, darling, did Tommy promise to call you tonight? Please, Mother. All right, all right. Oh, it's the phone. No, dear, that's the front door. Well, I'll get it, I'll get it. Oh, honestly. Oh, come on in. Evening, D.G. Who is it, D.G.? It's only Judge Grundle. It's only Judge Grundle. Every time I come here, I get the same, it's only Judge Grundle. Hello, Judge. I'm afraid we were expecting someone else. Why can't you expect me sometimes? Oh, Judge. It's simply that D.G.'s expecting... Please, Mother. All right, D.G. Excuse me, I think I'll use the phone. What's the matter with her? Boy trouble. She's acting like the leading lady in a soap opera. Life can be horrible. No, I don't think I will. I was out taking a little stroll, and I walked by here on the chance you were in, Penny. Would you like to take a little stroll? Well, thank you, Judge, but my heart was really set on spending a restful evening alone. I've shown real estate for two weekends in a row. I told Mr. Wiggins his partner was taking tonight and tomorrow off. Well, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. Dear, anyone who stands in Dee Gee's path tonight is living dangerously. Oh, come on in. Uh, hello, D.G. is... Uh... Who is it, dear? It's only Mr. Wiggins. <laughs> it's only Mr. Wiggins. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> like that. <laughs> hello, Mr. Wiggins. Uh, hello, Penny. Oh. Hello, Grundle. <laughs> Hello, Wigan. Excuse me. I think I'll use the phone. Uh, Penny, you told me you weren't doing anything this evening, so I thought I that wasn't maybe... doing anything because I needed an evening off. Yeah, so uh, what are you doing here, Wigan? What am I doing here? Well, I knew she was going to be home, so I just dropped in to... If uh... you knew she wanted the evening off, why did you drop in? Oh, now, please. Dee Gee's trying to... No, to... I won't. 
She won't. Now, uh, look, Grundle. What are you doing here? I just dropped in to ask... Well, I've got as much right to drop in as you have to drop in. My dropping in isn't the same as your dropping in. You knew that she wanted to have... Judge Grundle, Mr. Wiggins. Now, look, Grundle. What I know or don't know has nothing to do with my dropping in. Mr. Wiggins. My dropping in was not the same as your dropping in. I wish both of you would drop out. Really? Well, Penny, I dropped by. I dropped by to just. Well, I'm sorry. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but I'm tired, and and I wish you'd both go now. Uh, But but I please both of you. Well, I just wanted to sit. She uh, said both of us. (laughs) Well, all right. Come on, Judge. I'm coming. (laughs) Night, Penny. Night. Good night, and thanks so much for dropping in and out. Oh, dear, those two can be so... Oh, Oh, now, D.G. The waste. The utter waste of it all. What are you talking about? Two of them. You've got two of them and you just ordered them out. D.G., dear, I think we'd better have a little talk. Oh, the door, the door. I'll get it. Oh, what an evening. Oh, it's just you, Margaret. I couldn't find my key. I just can't stand this any longer. I'm going to my room. Gigi, Gigi, wait. Oh, Mrs. Williamson. What's the matter with you, Margaret? (laughs) Nothing. (laughs) Well, then I... Oh, Mrs. Williamson. What is it? (laughs) Nothing. (laughs) You weren't gone very long. I never left. (laughs) What happened? What is it, Margaret? Nothing. <laughs> Margaret, pull yourself together. Now, what is it? It can't be nothing. Well, it's next to nothing. It's a man. <laughs> oh, Margaret, between you and Dee. I can't help it. I've been stood up. Holy torpedo. I'd better go talk to Dee. Gee. <laughs> Gigi, darling. Oh, Mother. Shh, shh, shh. We don't want to wake Sue. Move over on your bed. Let me sit down. There. Thank you. I think you'd better tell me what's wrong between you and Tommy. Come on. Well, Mother, he's just about the most important boy in our crowd, and I... Well, I thought he liked me a lot last week. Shh, shh, shh. All right. Remember when he came over? Yes. Well, I was just as nice as I could be for the next couple of days. I saw him at the lake a lot, and... I guess I even sort of followed him around. I wanted him to know I liked him. Sounds to me like you've done the chasing. That's the wrong technique. It might scare a boy. Well, he did seem funny. Of course, he's been busy. He got a job as a soda jerk at Lester Jinkerson's drugstore for the summer. But you don't know what prestige it is for a girl to have a boyfriend who works in a a soda fountain. Of course I do. Mother... How do you do it with Mr. Wiggins and Judge Grundle? Oh, Dee Gee, I'm afraid that doesn't take much doing. I like both of them very much. I like them as friends. But they're always proposing. And I'm always saying no. But they still keep pitching. Tommy retired to the dugout after the first inning. (laughs) I suppose the judge and Mr. Wiggins think my indifference is a game, which it isn't. For some reason or other, indifference seems to be a man's downfall. He just keeps trying harder. Indifference. Indifference. Well, I could be indifferent to Tommy for a purpose. If it works for you, it ought to work for me. Oh, it's not quite the same. Oh, darling, we'll wake Sue. No, you won't. I'm awake. <laughs> oh, Sue, were you listening? Yep. <laughs> Margaret? Morning, D.G. Where's your mother? Mother and Sue will be right down. It's a beautiful day. What happened to you? Last I saw you, you were crying. So were you. Well, nothing's happened to me to change my feelings. <laughs> men. World would be better off if it didn't have any men in it, just people. <laughs> well, I'm not worried anymore. I know the secret of how to handle them. You do? Where'd you learn it? From Mother. Oh, I don't know about your mother. She doesn't seem to care one way or the other. Exactly. She's indifferent. And indifference drives men mad. Oh. I never tried indifference. 
I'm usually just bewitched, bothered, and bewildered. <laughs> but Mother's living proof that her system works. Mm. What am I a living proof of? Morning, Margaret. Morning, Miss Lemson. Morning, sir. Good morning. I said that you were the living proof that indifference works. Indifference? What are you talking well, what about? what you told me last night. What? I'm going to be indifferent to Tommy like you are to Judge Grundle and Mr. Wiggins. And Al Frybacker's going to get the same treatment for me. Oh, now, wait a minute, both of you. With me, it's real, not make-believe. Well, it'll be real with us, too. Leonard. Tommy. I'm hungry. <laughs> if that's Tommy, I'm not available. And I'm not available to Leonard. Oh, D.G. Margaret. If that phone is holding up breakfast, I'll answer it. I think both of you should understand that I only want the judge and Mr. Wiggins as friends. That's why I feel like Hello? I do. Hello? No, this is Sue. Who is it? Leonard? It's Tommy Trammell. You'd better talk to him, D.G. Maybe he wants to explain why he couldn't call last night. I'm completely indifferent. I don't care. Are you going to talk to him or not? I'm starving. D.G., you may tell him, Sue, that I am not at home. Okay. Tommy? She says she's not at home. <laughs> oh, I did it. I did it. But wait a minute. Mother, don't leave me stranded. You've got to stand by me. Oh, come on, Miss Williamson. Help us out. But I think you're making a mistake. With Mr. Wiggins and the judge, it's, it's an entirely different situation. Oh, please, Mother. Yes, Miss Williamson. You two have trapped me. Please, Mother, go along with them so we can eat. Well, all right. But I'm warning you, what may apply to Judge Grundle and Mr. Wiggins may not apply to Leonard Prybacker or Tommy Trammell. We'll be back to the Penny Singleton Show in just a moment. This land is your land. This land is my land. This land was made for you and me. Once upon a time, there was a big piece this of ice and snow that no one particularly wanted. The Aleuts and Eskimos lived there, but they just sailed and fished. The Russians claimed it, but didn't really exploit it. Then they sold it to America, and for a while it seemed that Russia had gotten the better deal. They, after all, had over seven million dollars. All America had was Seward's Folly, the frozen land of Alaska. But the discovery of gold on the Klondike River in Yukon Territory started a human stampede into Alaska. Soon, more than gold was discovered, and the whole world knew that all of Alaska's resources were not frozen. There are thick green forests and the volcanoes of the Valley of Ten Thousand Smokes and long winter nights when the skies are brilliant with the aurora borealis. There is a wealth of minerals below the earth and a wealth of furs above. There's a fragile forget-me-not blooming in the meadows and the changeable ptarmigan flying through them. So the unwanted land of ice and snow became America's 49th state, rich in resource and promise. The Aleutians named it the Great Land, and we have finally come to know that it really is. And now for Act Two of the Penny Singleton Show. It's about six o'clock of the same day, and we find Penny and her family finishing an early supper. What are we going to have for dessert, Mother? I'm not sure. We'll see when Margaret comes in. Mother, I'm worried. Since Tommy called this morning, there haven't been any phone calls. Well, it's still early, and Saturdays are always busy at the drugstore. He'll call, I'm sure. And I won't talk to him. Miss Williamson. Yes, Margaret? I was going to have ice cream for dessert, but I forgot to send Sue for it. I'll go now. All right. We'll clear the dishes and have our dessert on the porch. Hmm? Tommy, I don't want to answer it. If it's Leonard, I'm not here, that's all. Well, I certainly don't want to talk to the judge or Mr. Wiggins. Which leaves me. I don't care who I talk to. I'll answer it. Hello? Who's calling, please? Oh, it's Leonard Fry... something. I'm not in. She says she's not in. Good night. <laughs> Sue, you don't say she says she's not in or not home. You say... No, D.G., I want Sue to tell the truth. Oh... 
Uh, safe for me to answer at this time. Williamson residence. I'll get my pocketbook and give you the ice cream money, Sue. Okay. Talk to Mrs. Williamson. Well, just a second. Mrs. She's in the other room after her pocketbook, so you can honestly say she stepped out. Oh. Um, Mr. Wiggins? And she stepped out. No, I don't know when she'll come back in. <laughs> Bye. Gosh, they're beginning to call, aren't they? Saturday night and the wolves are howling. <laughs> I'll bet Leonard is miserable. Do I think a dollar should be enough? I'll get it. Hello? Oh, hello, Tommy. Mother, please now, please. Uh, uh, Tommy, call back later. No, I'm sorry. Bye. Thank you, Mother. That does it. Oh, it's my turn now. I'll take it. D.G., if that's Judge Grundle, well, technically, we're still having dinner. Just say that. Hello? Oh, I'm sorry, Judge Grundle, but Mother's at dinner. No, not out to dinner. I said out. Oh, well, let him think whatever he wants to think. <laughs> yes, I'll tell her goodbye. Here's the money, Sue. Run along. I'll hurry. Mrs. Williamson, this is fun. <laughs> Oh, it sure is, Mother. I know your advice is going to work. It wasn't advice. Oh, well, it's too late to back out. We're in it now. Tommy, uh, that's enough fizz water in my buttermilk float. Uh, give me some more nickels, will you? I'm going to try that phone again. Okay, Mr. Wiggins. Here you are. Oh, thank you. There was something odd in Margaret's voice when I called. Oh, hello, Tommy. Can I get a cigar? Oh, hello, Judge Grundle. I'll take care of you. Mr. Jickerson's in the back filling prescriptions. Uh, while you're at it, give me some nickels. May as well try Mrs. Williamson again while I'm here. D.G. sounded peculiar. D.G. answered the phone? When I called, Mrs. Williamson said she couldn't come to the phone. Penny? I mean, Mrs. Williamson answered the phone? Uh, Tommy, something very funny is going on. Oh, hello, Grundle. <laughs> hello, Wiggins. Oh, yeah, Judge, Mrs. Williamson answered the phone, and she said that... Margaret just told me she'd stepped out again. Oh, no, no, I got it from D.G. that she was out to dinner or something. But if hmm. D.G. answered the phone when you called, why wouldn't she when I called? If Penny's home, why did What you... did uh, D.G. tell you, Judge? Well, she told me that... Gentlemen? What? Yeah? It's quite apparent that they're giving us the business. <laughs> Gosh, I should have phoned D.G. last night. Yeah, well, Penny was angry with us last night, Judge. Yes, she was. Oh, I was playing hard to get, but I should have let myself be gotten before she decided not to get me. Hello, Tommy. Oh, hello, Judge Grundle, Mr. Wiggins. Sue! <laughs> well, what's the matter? I just want some ice cream, the packaged kind. Chocolate, please, Tommy. Uh, Sue, what's going on at your house? What are they saying about us? Uh, is your mother really trying Sue, to... Sue, why won't D.G. come to the phone? Oh, they're all having fun. Even Margaret. Fun? What do you mean? They're setting a man trap. What? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you mean, a man trap? Well, it's a game. You ought to play it, too. They're pretending to be indifferent. Pretend? Game? Mm-hmm. May I have the ice cream, please? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll pay for it. We owe a great deal to little Susan. Gee, thanks, Judge. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I'm surprised, but delighted. Uh, you mean indifference can work both ways? Yes, and thank you again and again, my dear little Susan. For what? <laughs> well, bye. Oh, Sue, you mean you met all three men in the drugstore and told them what was going on here? Was it a secret? <laughs> oh, Leonard knows the judge, and if he finds out this is a trick... Mother! Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, everybody. Let's get the rest of the story. Well, you were all having fun, so I told them the game so they could have fun, too. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, and did they say they were going to play it? Yep. <laughs> if Leonard finds out, I'm dead. <laughs> Mother, I've lost Tommy. That 
That's Leonard. That's Leonard. Where's my hat? Margaret, <laughs> you're not giving in. I've got to before he finds out. But you're deserting. Sorry, but I gotta go where the wild goose goes. <laughs> oh, Mother. <laughs> At least in the song, Frankie Lane left a feather. <laughs> Mother, I can't go through with it either. I'm gonna call Tommy and tell him everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when I think of Penny not knowing that we know. <laughs> I'm certainly glad I stopped in here. <laughs> oh, excuse me just a second, <clears throat> man. I've got to answer the phone. Uh, you know, possibly I have been a little too eager with Penny. Oh, Jiggerson's drugstore. Oh, hello, DG. Now, all right, Tommy. Be firm. You can play the same game. Tommy, I just got to talk to you. Remember, Tommy, the word is indifference. Hold the fort. Well, gosh, D.G., I... Take the advice of men of the world, Tommy. Stick to your guns. You've got to listen to me, Tommy. Indifference, my boy. Indifference. Well, D.G., I'm busy now. I can't talk to you. (laughs) Ha-ha! That's it, son. (laughs) You're one of us now. One of the three musketeers. Yeah, yeah, one of the three indifferent musketeers. (laughs) Stick around the phone, boys. We'll be getting more calls. Oh, gosh. D.G., what did Tommy... Why, D.G., you're crying. What happened? I've lost my first boyfriend. Oh, how do you know, darling? He's just playing your game now. And yours, too. Well, I tried to explain that it's different with me and the judge and Mr. Wiggins. Oh, this isn't helping you any. What did he say? He said he was too busy, but Judge Grundle and Mr. Wiggins were there, too, and and they were telling him to be as independent as they were. And he was! (laughs) I see. I may never get married. Oh, don't make any rash statements. I'm thinking. Now, they think I was playing a game, so now they're playing it. Well, they're faking. All right, I'll fake a little, too. What's that, Mother? I wasn't the wife of a Navy commander for nothing. You go upstairs and put cold water on your eyes. All right. Now, Penny, for the direct attack. <laughs> I bet that's D.G. calling me back. System sure does work. Yes, I- I'll answer it for you, Tommy. Thanks, Judge. Remember, I'm too busy. Oh, of course. Uh, and, and, Judge, if by any chance it's Penny... Yeah, you know, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Firmly indifferent. <laughs> I'll be so indifferent that you... Um... Hello? Judge? Penny? Oh, Judge Grundle, where have you been? I can't begin to tell you how I've missed you. Penny. <laughs> Grundle, you Benedict Arnold. Give me that phone. Hey, wait a minute. Hey. hey wait a minute. Hello? Penny. Now, now, look, both the judge and I oh, are... Oh, how nice to hear your voice, Horace. Oh, oh Penny. Oh, that's the first time you've ever called me Horace. Oh, are you two being indifferent? We, we'll, we'll, we'll be right over, Penny. Wiggins, my boy, we've won. That's right, Grundle. That means you too, Tommy. <laughs> oh, they're begging for us. But, but aren't we going to be indifferent? Well, we've won. Aren't you coming? Well, I think we ought to be indifferent a little longer. Well, look, son, you can stay here and be as indifferent as the ice cream. We're going. Come on, John. Oh, but wait a minute. We were all going to stick together like three musketeers. I mean, like like three indifferent musketeers. Oh, gee. Mr. Jinkerson, watch the ice cream counter. I've got to catch up with my friends. I washed my eyes, Mother, and they're all right now. What are you doing out on the porch? D.G., look down the street. Where? Oh, they're coming, and Tommy's with them. What did you do, Mother? You'll find out someday. But there is one thing before they get here. They don't know that we know they were playing a game. Hello, Penny. Hi. 
Hi. Hi, Gigi. What do you mean, Mother? Well, sometimes when a man feels he's won a victory, it's best not to let him know that the victory isn't entirely his. Here they come. My, your Tommy is going to be very proud of himself. Gigi, don't ever let him know you're the winner. Oh, Penny, my dear, I didn't know if I could spare the time to drop in this evening. I didn't either, Penny, but uh, since you pleaded so hard... I didn't know you couldn't live without me, Gigi. <laughs> Mother, when are we going to have our ice cream? Right now. Would everyone like ice cream? Well, I didn't plan to stay, but if you insist... If I... you can't do without us... Well, I'll stay if it makes you feel better, Gigi. I understand what you mean, Mother. <laughs> Say, uh, uh, what are you two talking about? Oh, oh, it's just woman talk. Oh, cut it out. <laughs> Come on, let's have our ice cream. Some of us think Connecticut is a suburb of New York City, but it isn't really. It just seems that way because so many people working in the city commute daily between their jobs and the grassy, country-like atmosphere of Stamford, Greenwich, or Larchmont. Those who don't commute, preferring to work where they live, may 9 to 5 it at the Electric Boat Division of General Dynamics in New London, selling insurance in Hartford or making clocks in Bristol. But regardless of where they work, both groups of people have a great deal in common. They don't share merely the nutmeg or constitution state, for the place of their residence is shared with others, such as P.T. Barnum, Harriet Beecher Stowe, Nathan Hale, Noah Webster. People in Connecticut today share the yearly excitement of the Yale-Harvard crew races, the beauty of the mountain laurel blossom in late spring, pride in their state's early Yankee peddlers, and more than anything, the true meaning of their state motto, He who transplanted sustains. <laughs> Penny Singleton Show featured Gail Gordon, Jim Backus, B. Benaderet, Mary Lee Robb, Sheila James, and Conrad Binion. The music was composed and conducted by Von Dexter. The Penny Singleton Show, written and produced by Robert Soderbergh and directed by Max Hutto, stars Penny Singleton. Good night. Keep well. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.
the Penny Singleton Show. Hello. Happy you're here. On stage, tonight from Hollywood, the Penny Singleton Show. Penny in our story is Mrs. Penny Williamson, a war widow and the mother of two girls, 13-year-old D.G. and 8-year-old Sue. We go back to yesterday evening to start our story. Penny is in the kitchen helping Margaret prepare dinner. Here's some milk for the mashed potatoes. Need some help? No, I always mash potatoes this way. <laughs> D.G. Sue and I aren't going to do anything tomorrow. We're having a safe and sane fourth. Oh! How'd you ever talk them out of fireworks? I have a new system for arriving at major family decisions. I'm the president, and D.G. and Sue make up the Senate and the House. Yeah. I just wish they'd make up their beds. <laughs> I can take care of the House. Anyway, as president, I proposed the bill for no fireworks, and Congress passed it. We also voted you the day off tomorrow. Well, thanks, Prez. You and Congress will always have my block of votes. Thank you. Well, I guess everything's about ready. Just need the powdered sugar for the shortcake. I sent Sue over to Mrs. Duncan's to borrow a cupful. That's Sue now, at long last. Now, I'll call Gigi and tell her dinner's ready. Hurry up, Sue. Here's the sugar, Mother. Thank you. Sue, what took you so long at Mrs. Duncan's? The usual thing. She grilled me. <laughs> and what did she want to know this time? She asked me who I'd like for a stepfather, Judge Gondola or Mr. Wiggins. <laughs> Either way you answered, I'm in trouble. Whom did you say you wanted? Joel McRae. <laughs> Sue, darling, why didn't you just take the sugar, thank her, and then run for your life? I will the next time, Madam President. Mother, you've looked depressed all during dinner. What's the matter? Oh, I've been thinking about Mrs. Duncan, D.G. May I have another piece of strawberry shortcake, please? Darling, you had a big piece. Where do you put it? Same old place. <laughs> well, if you think there's room, just a tiny slice. D.G. Yes, Mother? Does Mrs. Duncan ask you questions, too? Well, sometimes. Yesterday she was leaning over her back fence. She's always leaning over that fence. And she started a conversation about Judge Grundle and Mr. Wiggins. She asked which one I'd like for a stepfather. And whom did you choose? Well, I said John Wayne. <laughs> I'd rather have Joel McRae. There isn't a man living braver than John Wayne. Ah. Uh. <laughs> anyway, Mother, that's the type I told Mrs. Duncan I'd like you to marry. Well, I'm glad you didn't express an opinion about the judge or Mr. Wiggins. She'd have made a mountain out of that. Oh, and Mrs. Duncan did want to know if you'd had a big party lately. What? Well, she saw an empty wine bottle in the barrel we throw cans and bottles in. Well, I hope you told her it was the cooking sherry that Margaret sometimes uses. Well, I didn't get a chance because the cans made too much noise. The cans? Well, she was rooting around to see what we've been eating lately. <laughs> she thinks you're terribly extravagant. Honestly. More tea, Miss Williamson. No, thanks. Margaret, I just heard that Mrs. Duncan inspects the barrel we throw cans in. She does? Why don't we booby trap it? <laughs> well, I'll go, Mother. Thank you. I think the only thing for me to do, Margaret, is to have a straightforward talk with Mrs. Duncan. Well, it might work if you can get a word in edgewise, like a knife. <laughs> Good evening, Judge Grundle. Evening, D.G. Is your mother... Well, we're in the dining room, Judge. Come on in. Oh, hello, Penny. Sue. Hello, Margaret. Hello, Judge. Hello. Like some of my strawberry shortcake, Judge? Uh, thank you, but I don't think I'd better. Why, Judge, you love Margaret's shortcake. No, uh, no, 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 no. You see, the other day it was brought to my attention that I'm developing what is often referred to as a corpulent midriff. You mean a pot? <laughs> Well, not exactly. Uh, uh, Susan, you're being fresh. Mother, it's not Sue's fault. <laughs> the judge started. <laughs> Fiji's right, Judge. You did lead with your solar plexus. <laughs> oh. Uh, Margaret, no shortcake for his honor. And the girls will help you clear the table in a few minutes. Oh, thanks. I, I dropped by, Penny, to ask you something. I wanted to know if you... Penny? Uh, what? Anything wrong? Oh, just Ida Duncan. Oh, 
Well, I, I was wondering if you had any plans for the force tomorrow. Yes, we do. We're not going driving on the highways, we're not going to set fire to the house, and we're not going to get ourselves burned or hurt. We agreed, didn't we, Congress? Uh-huh. Sue filibustered a while in favor of a couple of little firecrackers, but we won her over on a compromise. A compromise? I'm going to be allowed to eat more watermelon than I should. <laughs> well... Well, I think the idea of a safe and sane fourth is very good since you're a household of women, but if you had a man here to, well, to, to, to manage things, I think you could celebrate a little bit without danger. Judge, we had our meeting and we voted. Madam and President? We... Yes, Sue. I think we ought to count the votes again. <laughs> now, Sue, you can. We wouldn't mind if Judge Grundle did everything. Sue and I just watch, Mother. D.G., you voted in favor of a safe and sane fourth. Well, we'll still be safe and sane, Mother. And the judge does have his heart set on it, haven't you, Judge? Yes. Judge, whenever I want Mother to change her mind, I hug and kiss her. Penny, this is what I've wanted to do for years. Now, I... now, stay right where you are, Judge. It wouldn't be safe, and you wouldn't be sane to try it. Oh, Penny, <laughs> now, really. Uh, answer the door, Sue. Okay. It must be Mr. Wiggins. I can see his car out front. Wiggins? Why is he always coming in at the wrong time? After all, as my partner in the Williamson and Wiggins real estate agency, he may want to talk over some, some proposition. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> oh, Judge. Come on in, Mr. Wiggins. We're in the dining room. Uh, hello, Sue. Thank you. <laughs> hello, Mr. Wiggins. Uh, hello, Patty. DG, I just came over. Oh, Judge. You're here. Yes, I'm here. Now, Judge, Mr. Wiggins, you two start all over again and try being friendly. Go ahead. Hello, Judge. <laughs> Hello, Wiggins. Oh, now, really. Well, what do you want me to do, kiss him? I give up. Oh, good. Well, Judge, if you're leaving, just assume I've taken Penny's advice and kissed you goodbye. I am not leaving. I came over here to take D.G. and Sue downtown to buy some fireworks for tomorrow. Are we back on that subject again? But that's what I came over to do, Judge. <laughs> Gee, Mr. Wiggins, looks like you read the judge's mind. Yes, and it was about as dull as reading the telephone book. <laughs> Mother, if Mr. Wiggins wants to get fireworks, too, you're just outnumbered. Somehow or other, I never can win. I have a discussion with my daughters. They agree to give up fireworks. Well, honestly, Mother, we do. We just want to watch the judge and Mr. Wiggins play with them. I think I have that problem all settled. I'm about to relax when another problem pops up. And believe me, the problem next door is a butte. And then two men walk into my house and, and discombobulate everything. Yeah, well, uh, what's the matter next door? It's Ida Duncan's gossip. Oh, Penny, Ida's gossip doesn't hurt anyone. You take it much too seriously. Oh, she's constantly looking over my shoulder. Oh, it's not as bad as that. Isn't as bad as... All right, I'll prove something to you. Ida Duncan is watching us right this minute. Oh, no. And I can prove it. Sue, dear, go pull down the shades. Okay. Uh. I don't get it. I can prove Ida is watching because as soon as both the shades are down, the other one too, Sue... Ida will be over here in ten seconds. She'll have to know what's going on. Start counting, Mother. One, two, three, oh, four, I don't believe five, it. six, seven, you mean eight, she... nine, oh. ten. <laughs> Come right in, Ida. <laughs> oh, hello, Penny, my dear. Oh, I didn't know you had company. <laughs> hello, Ida. Oh, hello. Why is uh, everybody staring at me? She's not even out of breath. <laughs> Jet propelled. You see, gentlemen? Oh, well, I, I don't understand. I, I just came over to borrow a few pieces of... Uh, of uh, Gossip? Yes. Oh, no, I, uh, Penny, I don't know what you mean. Uh, Judge, Mr. Wiggins, would you excuse us, please? Oh, yes, Ida, yes, let's go into the living room. I'd like to have a little talk with you. Oh, my dear. Is it something you want to keep a secret? What I'm going to tell you, Ida, you may tell to the world. But, Penny, how can you say these things to me, your dearest friend? I'm only saying what's true. But you're wrong. You're wrong. I never talk about you. Maybe you don't know you gossip. The other day, the butcher asked me how my diet was coming along. I'm not on any diet, but he told me you said I was. Diet? Yes. 
Where'd you get such an idea? This is an important item, but I'm using it as an example. Oh. Uh, well, uh, when you gave away some of your clothes to the Salvation Army last week, they stopped at my house next, and I noticed that green dress of yours, which seemed perfectly good, so I assumed... Um, but why tell the butcher? Well, we... Uh, we were discussing the fact that you bought rather expensive cuts of meat. Does he tell everyone what I buy? Oh, no, no, no. You see, his account book happened to be open on the table, and I just happened to notice <laughs> what your bill was last month. And, well, buying so much meat fitted in with the diet, so I put two and two together. So that's how Charmaine at the beauty parlor knew what my butcher bill was last month. She did not hear that from me. I'm positive she heard it from Bernice Harrington. Why, Bernice? Because she's the one I told about your bill. <laughs> oh, Ida. Oh, uh, uh, I guess I, I just have a naturally inquiring mind, I guess. Ida, I'm not objecting to your mind. It's your tongue. This time, when you put two and two together, it didn't hurt anyone. But someday, oh, Ida... Oh, Penny, I, I, I never realized that I talk so much. But do you now? Oh, of course. And, and I'm going to watch myself like a hawk. Never let it be said that Ida Duncan knowingly would do anything to her. Well, I'm sure you don't do these things knowingly, Ida. You've got to watch, Now, dear, I've got to run now, but believe me, I appreciate everything you've told me. It takes a friend to tell the truth to another friend. Ida, you've got to watch. Now, dear, I'll watch myself like a hawk. Now, good night, dear. Good night. Uh... Well, Ida leave? Yes. Well, did you tell her? Uh, Penny, if I'd have left, could we, uh... I told her, but... Well, didn't she understand what you were trying to tell her? Yes, but she got it too fast. Well, if she got it, that's enough. Now, what about the fireworks for tomorrow? Oh, dear. Please, Penny. <laughs> yes, Penny, please, huh? Uh, <laughs> all right, but we won't buy them until tomorrow. Well, why wait until tomorrow? Because maybe they'll be sold out of everything by then. <laughs> We'll be back to the Penny Singleton Show in a moment. This land is your land. This land is my land. This land was made for you and me. It's a nice place to visit. And 18,602,000 people can't be wrong. They think it's a nice place to live, too. Some live up north in the shadow of Mount Tamapias, where the fog rolls in like ghostly tumbleweed to envelop the Golden Gate Bridge. Some live down south in the shadows of the movie giants, where the smog rolls in to envelop everything. All of them live in California, a magic state. But this magic isn't merely the result of the magic lantern. It was present long before the first director shot at action. Even before John Marshall whispered gold, California's magic lies largely in its contrasts. Here, entire fields blow yellow with poppies or lie barren in waste. Here, the temperature may rise to 134 degrees or sink to 45 below. Here, we find the highest point in the United States outside of Alaska, Mount Whitney, and the lowest, Death Valley. Here is the serenity of the missions and the near madness of the freeways. California's many facets give its residents an attitude described by O. Henry. Californians are a race of people. They are not merely inhabitants of a state. <laughs> And now for Act Two of the Penny Singleton Show. It's the 4th of July now, and we find Penny and her family with Judge Grundle and Mr. Wiggins in downtown Middleton. They are entering a store that sells fireworks. Oh, dear, they've still got a lot of stuff left. Best fireworks in town here. Well, we just want some little firecrackers if they have them, and sparklers. Boy, we're lucky they're not sold out. It's so late in the day. Hello. Oh. May I help you? Yes. We want to buy some fireworks that won't do anything. What do you mean, madam, that won't do anything? 
Well, I don't know how I can put it any other way. We want fireworks that won't do anything. Madam, if one goes to the trouble to strike a match, then light a fuse. One certainly wants something to happen, doesn't one? <laughs> yes, but not very much. Oh, now, Penny, you certainly want to get a couple of things that are fun. We really don't care, Judge. I'd like some sparklers. Well, otherwise, Penny, we might just as well light a candle and sit there and watch it burn. <laughs> uh, let me show you some wonderful new things that are out this year. They're absolutely spectacular. Uh, Judge, Mr. Wiggins, let's get the little firecrackers and sparklers and get out of here. Now, here's something novel. Oh, look what he's got. Oh, this is a real Jim Dandy. It's enormous. What is it? It's called the Magnetic Mind Bomb. <laughs> Go within three feet of it with a lighted cigarette and it goes off. <laughs> Say now, hot dog. Hey. It's a killer, huh? You can say that again. I'm sorry, but... Oh, here's something want... else. It's sensational. Don't they have any sparklers, Mother? Now, this foot-long firecracker is called the Atomic Firecracker. <laughs> It's our own little joke, but we recommend that the purchasers of this little baby have concrete bunkers built in their yard. <laughs> now, really? Boy, oh boy, if they'd had those when I was a kid. When you were a kid, the Chinese hadn't invented gunpowder yet. <laughs> Judge, Mr. Wiggins, please tell them that. Oh, please, all madam. Uh, let me show you the piece de resistance. Look, you, I'm going to resist everything. All we want... Uh, look at this, madam. The most sensational fireworks ever invented. I'm told the plans for it were stolen directly from the Russians. <laughs> Jeepers, look at that, John. Holy mackerel, I've never seen anything like that. Me either. Uh, what's it called? This? This is the Moscow Mule Blockbuster. <laughs> Holy torpedo, that does it. Come on, girls. We'll get our little firecrackers and sparklers somewhere else. This place frightens me. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine going to three places before we could buy little firecrackers and sparklers. Ooh, it's warm. Mother, maybe it'd be nice to have supper on the side porch, sort of picnic style. May I help in the kitchen? There's not much to do. We're going to have cold fried chicken. And watermelon. I'll help you with the salad, Mother. I think I'll go out and get the sparklers set up in the lawn by the porch. Once it starts to get dark... Oh, I'll... Mr. Wiggins, you could help if you'd take the dining room chairs out on the porch. Okay. Well, <laughs> this is turning out to be a very pleasant Fourth of July after all. <laughs> Sparklers here for his nose. Chairs and table all set up, Penny. Then you're through, Mr. Wiggins. Dinner will be ready in about 30 minutes. Everything uh, set up, Judge? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Did a picture of George Washington with the sparklers. Washington? He's got three eyes there. <laughs> that one is his nose. <laughs> Well, then why is it looking at me? <laughs> Look, Wiggins, if you think you can do any better, you Hello can do... Hello there. Happy Fourth of July. Hello, Ida. Hello. Oh, how cute, Judge. You've made a Christmas tree with the sparklers. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas tree, that's very good. Uh, that, that's enough, that's enough. Well, I'm going to watch your fireworks, too. Penny just called and asked me to join you. Oh, there's a wonderful woman. Ida, that's the most accurate thing you've ever said. Yes, we know her pretty well, too, Ida. Oh, but not like I do. Appear appearances can be very deceptive. If it takes a woman to understand another woman... I also know Penny through her children, too, you see. And the children always reflect the mother. Like how? Well, for example, just yesterday, Sue blurted out she'd like to have Joel McRae for a father. Is he in town? <laughs> oh, you don't understand. It's what Joel McRae represents to Sue, and therefore to Penny. McRae is the, is the Texas Ranger. Guns, noise, adventure, daring. Well, I can be daring at times. Oh, <laughs> just I'm afraid you're the, the sparkler type. <laughs> and there's D.G., too. She'd like John Wayne for a father. 
Yeah, another shoot 'em up bang bang type. <laughs> well, knowing you two, it's so easy to understand why Penny never remarried. She's just never found another daring type like her husband, Commander Williamson. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure of that. Well, I'd better go in and see if I can help her in the kitchen. You, Penny. Come on in, Ida. Joel McCrae. John Wayne. If Penny's appearance is deceptive, other people's appearances might be deceptive, too. You mean, uh, like us? Yeah, yeah. The sparkler type. How do they know I'm not... How soon did you say Penny would have dinner ready? Oh, in about 30 daring type. Shoot them up, bang, bang. <laughs> Judge, uh, you thinking what I'm thinking? I am if you're thinking we could get to that first fireworks store and still be back in time. Oh, sure we could. She wants shoot them up types. She's got them. Come on. Let's saddle up, McCray. Okay, Wayne. <laughs> Judge and Mr. Wiggins are certainly having fun. Do you think the judge was really a Texas Ranger once, Mother? Like he said at dinner? Oh, I'm sure he was making it up. Just like Mr. Wiggins made up that pearl hunting expedition in the Pacific. Funny. Somebody else I heard about had a ship called the Red Witch. This has been wonderful. Everything about used up, Judge, Mr. Wiggins? Show's just beginning, folks. Beginning? Ladies and gentlemen, next comes the major attraction of the evening. Uh, what he means is, here's where we separate the men from the boys. Yeah. I have a funny feeling they aren't talking about sparklers. Here we go! Mother, look, Mr. What? Wiggins is opening packages and packages of more fireworks. What in the world? Now listen here, Judge, Mr. Wiggins, you just Stand stopped back, that... everyone. We're shooting them up tonight. Yeah. Look it! Oh! oh no. <laughs> More butter, Mother. Thank you, D.G. Ida, put some of it on Mr. Wiggins' hand. All right. <laughs> Here, Mr. Wiggins. <laughs> and now for you, Judge. Where else does it hurt? Well, here and here and here. I see. I'll just rub a little butter. <laughs> Hold still. There. Oh, that's better. It's oh, it's soothing. just a little blister, Judge. Well. Oh, be careful, Ida. You're not buttering a piece of toast. <laughs> Mother, I'd still like to know. What happened? <laughs> yes, boys. Exactly what got into you. Did you have this little stunt planned all the time you were cooperating with me on having a safe and sane fourth? No, no. No, he didn't, Penny. Then what made you change? Well, John Wayne here decided to... Uh, uh, no, 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 just wait a minute, Wiggins. Joel McRae was mixed up in this, too. John Wayne? Joel McRae? Well, those two are connected with a private family joke among D.G. Sue and me. But how did you two... Oh, my, it's late. <laughs> uh, Penny, <laughs> I, I really think I should be running along now. I want an explanation, gentlemen. D.G. Sue, did you talk to the judge or Mr. Wiggins about John Wayne? No, Mother. No. Nope. And I certainly never mentioned Joel McRae or Ida. Uh, yes. You were the only other person who... And you put two and two together again. Ida Duncan. We were trying to be the daring type. <laughs> yeah. Bang, bang. <laughs> Penny, I, I, I didn't say a thing that could cause any damage. You didn't? Look at those two. Have you ever seen anything more damaged than they are? 
Well, I simply said... I'm so disappointed. And after you promised last night... Mother, what's happening? What? Who is it? Who owns the house next door? Why, why it's mine. I'd have Duncan. Why? Fireworks set your fence on fire. Better hurry. Oh, my oh, goodness. goodness. Oh, say, say we, we'd better help, Wiggins. Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Mrs. Duncan's back fence is already gone. Oh, dear, that's too bad, but... Wait a minute. This may teach Ida a lesson. Now she won't have a back fence to gossip over. The judge and Mr. Wiggins are just standing there arguing over how to put the fire out. Do something, Mother, do something. Holy torpedo, there's only enough butter left for breakfast. <laughs> Deejee, go turn on the lawn sprinklers before John Wayne and Joel McRae hurt themselves again. <laughs> Everybody knows which company produces most of the world's tomato soup, but few know where the tomatoes come from. Not too many are aware of the vast tomato fields of New Jersey. Canning tomatoes isn't New Jersey's only claim to fame, however. The Miss America Beauty Pageant is held annually in Atlantic City, which also has delicious saltwater taffy and an amusement park with no roller coaster. Better than a roller coaster ride, though or at least quieter, is a ferry ride across the Delaware from Cape May, about 45 miles from the boardwalk by way of Stone Harbor, with its nesting egrets and herons. Unfortunately, the casual observer seldom sees the richness of growing things or the beauty of the birds. He more often notices the swampy meadows, the towns and cities huddled along the railroad, the sign, Trenton makes, the world takes. It is usually the native New Jerseyite who delights in beaches such as Wildwood, the rolling farms of Monmouth County, the dairy country and gentle mountains of western New Jersey. One native thought that he would never see a poem lovely as a tree. Could be he was referring to the proud red oak, symbolic of the Garden State. <laughs> Penny Singleton Show featured Gail Gordon, Jim Backus, B. Benaderet, Sarah Selby, Mary Lee Robb, Sheila James, and Paul Fries. The music was composed and conducted by Von Dexter. The Penny Singleton Show, written and produced by Robert Soderbergh and directed by Max Hutto, stars Penny Singleton. Good night. Keep well. <laughs> This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.
Bob Hope returns Tuesday, October 3rd over most of these NBC stations. There's more top Tuesday evening listening when Bob Hope returns on October 3rd. NBC presents the Penny Singleton Show. On stage tonight from Hollywood, another of NBC's outstanding half-hour presentations, The Penny Singleton Show. Hello. Happy you're listening. Penny in our story is Mrs. Penny Williamson, a young widow and the mother of two daughters, D.G. and Sue. Penny supports her family and home by selling real estate in the firm of Williamson and Wiggins. It's late afternoon and we meet Penny coming home from work. She's just driven her car into the driveway. Hi, Mother. Hello, Sue. Give me a kiss. Mm. There we are. Mmm. <laughs> What have you been doing today? I'm making a study of ladybugs. That sounds interesting. Um, let's go in the kitchen door. I'm trying to find out who sets fire to all the houses that ladybugs always fly away home to. <laughs> well, I've always wondered about that, too. Evening, Mrs. Williamson. Oh, evening, Mark. <laughs> My dinner smells good. Yeah, we're having clean-up the kitchen. What? Hash. Would you mind if I served dinner a little early tonight? Uh-uh. Have a date? Uh-huh. Leonard Freibacker. I- I'm taking him for a canoe ride on the lake tonight. You're taking him? You mean you do the paddling? Oh, I can't help myself. <laughs> when Leonard looks at me with those big blue eyes and calls me his little Pocahontas, I just automatically get that outboard motor feeling. <laughs> You'd better get ready for dinner. Yeah, it'll be about ten minutes. Where's D.G. Sue? In the living room, reading a mystery story. Again? I told that girl. You know what I have, Mother? What? A little ladybug. Her wings hurt, and I've got her in a box hospital. Oh, that's nice, dear. Now go on upstairs and wash. Gee, I wish there was a way to take a ladybug's temperature. Hurry, Sue. I am, I am. D.G.? Oh, there you are, D.G., reading again. Hello, Mother. Excuse me, Mother. Darling. Please, Mother, there's a hand just coming through the window. What's the name of that book? The Pool of Blood. Please, Mother. (laughs) The Pool of... Oh, no. Where'd you get that? Wait a minute. The hand came closer and closer. Gloria felt a growing fright, but she knew not from whence the fear came. She started to turn... The hand paused. I don't think that's the kind of a book you should be reading. She touched the pearls around her swan-like neck. There are so many good books to read, dear. But the hand came closer and closer. Gloria shuddered from an unknown dread. I mean, I I think she... She felt she should run, but the dark corners of the room offered no escape from the growing fear that she was about to... What, Mother? Don't stop now. What did the hand do? (laughs) I mean, I... Oh, D.G. Mother... Is there anything mysterious and secret about our house? Only the fact it still stands up with the two of you living in it. (laughs) No, I mean secret sliding panels, dark, uncertain passageways, bells that ring from nowhere. (gasps) Oh. Oh, now you've got me doing it. It's just the phone. You get ready for dinner. I'll talk to you about that book later. Oh, gee. Hello. Penny, this is Judge Grundle. I want to come over and have a little talk with you. Well, we're just about to sit down to dinner. Couldn't it wait until tomorrow? Penny, Penny, face it. There are times when a woman needs the advice of a man. Well, why not tomorrow? Well, I... uh, Have you seen the evening paper? No, I just came in and we're eating early. I'm coming over. You need me. I do? Yes. Goodbye. (laughs) I need the judge. Did I park in front of another fire hydrant today? Uh, not quite, Margaret. Oh, well, I don't want to rush anybody. <laughs> you finished, Gigi? Almost. 
Well, take your time. I don't want to rush anybody. <laughs> you finished with that sauce dish, too? Just one more bite. Oh. Oh, well, don't hurry on account of me. I don't want to rush anybody. <laughs> oh, Margaret, just rinse and stack the dishes. Then you won't be worried about being late for your date with Leonard. Me worried about being late for Leonard? Me worried? Me? Oh, it's Leonard and I'm late. Margaret, <laughs> I've finished. I'll answer it. Personally, I hope it's the judge and he's changed his mind about whatever was on his mind. Hello? Uh, Penny, this is Wiggins. I'm through now, Margaret. Yes? I'd uh, like to come over to your house tonight. Well, Mr. Wiggins, I've been with you all day in the office and right I now... Know, I know, but since the evening paper came out... Evening paper? I, I don't want to frighten you, Penny. I'll be right over. But, Mr. Wiggins, Judge Grendel called and I... I uh, oh. What's the matter? Did anybody bring in the evening paper? I don't think so. I'll go get it. What's wrong, Miss Williamson? Well, I don't know. Judge Grendel called about coming over because of something in the evening paper, and Mr. Wiggins just called about the same thing. You know what happens when they're both here at the same time. I know. Here's the paper, Mother. Thanks, Sue. I'll look through it and see what's causing all the excitement. We'll go in the living room while Margaret clears the table. <laughs> know what upset them. There was nothing in the local news. Well, what were some of the headlines? Well, Mayor's wife has Vestalia. Mayor's wife unveils statue of President Fillmore. What else? Mayor's wife robbed last night. Mayor's wife opens new chickadee sanctuary. There ought to be one soon saying Mayor's wife takes a rest. <laughs> well, I just can't see what they're excited about. There's Marcus Wild Goose calling. Coming, Leonard. Now, I'll see who it is on my way out. Okay. Hello, Mrs. Duncan. Hello, Bobby. It's Mrs. Duncan. Goodbye. We're in the living room, Ida. Oh, Penny, my dear, I'm so glad you're home. Hello, D.G. Sue. Hi. Hello, Mrs. Duncan. My, you look upset, Ida. What's the matter? Sit down. Oh, no, I don't dare. I've got to get back to my house before it's too dark out. Too dark out? My dear, haven't you read the paper? The evening paper? You too? The mayor's wife was robbed last night. Well, I read that, but Middleton, like every other town, always has its share of robberies. And a hand came through the window. Where? What window? Oh, dear. <laughs> oh. It's just a book she's going to stop reading. Mother, I'll never know what happened to Gloria. We'll go into that later. She gets saved. I read the last page of the book. <laughs> so you wrecked it. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, at least I don't know who the murderer is. The butler. Now, now, please, Penny, it's getting late and I do want to get back Now, you say there have been robberies, all right But never in this neighborhood The mayor's home was only three blocks away from us Ida, I think you're dramatizing things Take the usual precautions and you'll be all right How can you be so calm? Well, getting upset and excited isn't going to help I'll lend you my water pistol, Mrs. Duncan It's worth 60 feet Uh... Uh, D.G., would you answer sure, that? Oh, good heavens. I think I'd be afraid to answer my door after the sun went down. Oh, I uh... Oh, hello. Uh, is that the masked bandit, D.G.? No, it's only Judge Grundle. Who was she expecting, Clark Gable? <laughs> oh, good evening, Penny. Hello, Judge. Uh, Ida, Sue. Hi, Your Honor. Hello, Judge. I was just talking to Penny about the mayor's wife being robbed last night. Uh, yes, yes. Now's the time, Penny, when you need a man around this house. Then you're worried about it, too? Mm -hmm. You see, Penny? I think you're both making too much out of it. Oh, uh, well, if, if there's nothing more I can say, I'm going to run home. It is getting dark. I'll let myself out. All right, Ida. Bye. Uh, I'll see who it is, Penny. Okay. Oh, hello, Ida. Is uh, Penny on? Uh, yes, Mr. Wiggins, in the living room. Goodbye. I'm on my way. Hello, Penny, D.G., and Sue. Hello, Mr. Wiggins. Hello, Mr. Hello, Mr. Wiggins. Oh, Hello, Grundle. <laughs> Hello, Wigan. I wish when you two met each other, you wouldn't react like two male Siamese fish. Well, what's Grundle doing here? Well, first you tell me what you wanted to see me about. Uh, last night, the mayor's wife That's was... That's why I'm here, too. Oh. That I thought of it first. You haven't thought of anything first since you were born. <laughs> now, Judge. Mr. Wiggins, Judge... 
Do you think our lives are in danger? Oh, D.G. Would it be awful if suddenly the lights went out? What do you think would happen? It'd be dark. <laughs> Sue, you just don't understand. Uh, Judge, Mr. Wiggins, it's sweet of both of you to be concerned about us, but I have locks on everything, and there's a phone right by my bed. But, Penny, if Well, the... I don't want to get the children excited, either. I'm not, Mother. I'm more worried about my ladybug. Well, I think it's thrilling. I feel just like Gloria in the pool of blood. The what? Um, it's a book. You see, Penny, I-, I thought it would take something like this to make you realize that a man around the house... He would... means a man like me. I don't mean any such thing. I'm talking about myself. Oh, Mr. Wiggins and Judge Grundle, couldn't we change the subject? I have a question that would change the subject. Good. Oh, what is your question, Sue? So, if you want the right answer, ask me. Uh, what is it, Sue? You see how nice it is, Penny, to have a man around to answer the child's question? <laughs> Come on, Sue. Ask Uncle Wiggy. <laughs> Ask the judge, Sue. I'll ask both of you. Uh, uh, now, what? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Are there men ladybugs? <laughs> <laughs> well, um... <clears throat> so you want to answer the question, Wiggins? Oh, no, no, no. You go ahead. Tell you. No, no, please, Wiggins. I don't want to interfere. Tell the child. <clears throat> Well... Yes? Well... Don't you want to tell her, Judge? Don't either one of you want to tell her? If Wiggins wants to, he's perfectly able to go right ahead. I defer to you, Judge. Do either of you know the answer? Sue, darling, there are male ladybugs. The name is really Ladybird. They were given that name because long ago the little bug saved a valuable crop. And the people were so grateful, they named them Bird of Our Lady. So the name doesn't mean they are all ladies. Gee, thanks, Mother. Yes, it is nice to have a man around the house to answer children's questions. <laughs> Holy torpedo, what's that? I'll go. No, no, I'll go. Penny, Penny! I'll go, it's Ida. Oh, Liza Harrington just phoned me, Penny. She was robbed. What? Why, she lives just two blocks from here. Yes, what, what happened? happened? Now, 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 when did it happen? Well, apparently, while mm-hmm. she was out to dinner, mm-hmm. when she came home, she saw the porch door open. Did he break in? No, she'd left it unlocked. She remembered that later. I wonder if a hand came through the window. Oh, DJ. <laughs> I'll phone Liza and see if there's anything I can do. Now, Penny, don't you think I was right to come over? You see, Penny? Yeah. She left her door unlocked. That's practically an invitation. Let's worry about Liza, not me. The Williamson family can take care of itself. NBC is bringing you the Penny Singleton Show. And don't forget... Those remarkable inhabitants of 79 Wistful Vista, Fibber McGee and Molly, along with Mayor Latrivia, Mr. Wimple, Sis, and the entire cast, return on Tuesday, September 19th, over most of these same NBC stations. McGee's wild schemes and dreams of glory always go awry, but somehow Molly loves him through thick and thin, and you'll love them both when they return on September 19th, just two weeks before Bob Hope. And now for Act Two of the Penny Singleton Show. It's the next morning, and we find Penny and her family in the dining room, just finishing breakfast as Margaret enters. Now the cup came, Miss Williamson. I think I have time. Just a little, thanks. Uh, if Leonard and I hadn't gone canoeing last night, I would have been here for all the excitement. You didn't miss much. The burglar only took silver, which Mrs. Harrington said was insured. Mm, Well, I'm taking some insurance to bed with me tonight. That old-fashioned flat iron and the rolling pin. Mother, I don't think I'll read any more of The Pool of Blood for a while. You were right, because you're taking that book back to the rental library this morning. I could let my lizards and frogs and toads loose tonight. That'd keep him out. That'd keep all of us out. <laughs> well, I'd better be off to work. Um, uh, Sue, when you stay home with me tonight... Sure. 
Oh, for heaven's sake. The less we talk about this matter, the happier we'll all be. I'll see you tonight. Goodbye. <laughs> Williamson Wiggins, this is, uh, uh, oh, hello, Mr. Russell. Hmm. Uh, you'd like Mrs. Williamson to show you the property at nine? Yes, she should be in any minute. Yes, yes, uh, I'll tell her. Goodbye. Penny? Penny? I can't... Oh. Uh, hello, Wiggins. Hello, Grundle. Uh, I came to see Penny. She's not in yet. Oh, well, I... Maybe we'll have to work on this together, Wiggins. You, uh, leading up to the robbery? Yes, yes. I think we should insist that Penny allow us to patrol her house tonight. I hate to say this, but I agree with you. Good morning, Mr. Wiggins. Oh, good morning, Penny. Sorry I'm a little late. Oh, hello, Judge. Good morning, Penny. Uh, Mr. Wiggins, did Mr. Russell call? Uh, yes, and he wants to see the property this morning. Then I'd better go uh, right Penny, on Penny, Penny, uh, wait what? a minute. Wiggins and I are worried about what happened last night. Oh, please don't. We think we should come over to your place tonight and, uh, well, <laughs> keep an eye on it. <laughs> well, you're both very nice, but the police force is on the job. I saw two policemen in the neighborhood when I was driving to work. We'll be all right. Now I'd better get right over to Mr. Russell's. Uh, but, but, Penny, you'd never need to know we were there if uh, that would be all right. Thanks, no. Bye. Uh, think what a feather it would be in my cap if I caught that guy. I'd, I'd be irresistible. If I caught him, Penny might change her whole attitude toward me. I know the children would think I was just about the bravest fellow in the world. The kind of a man they'd like around the house. Me too. Hey. Hey, wait a minute, Grundle. Mm -hmm. What? What? Now, you're not going to patrol that place without me, Wiggins. She wouldn't have to know we were there. Uh, but she was... She... No. No, she wouldn't. <laughs> now, Horace, the thought occurs to me that if Penny doesn't want us there, we shouldn't go there. <laughs> Bessemer, I was thinking exactly the same thing. <laughs> There's no need to go. No, well, you're not wanted. Yeah. Well, I've got to get back to court. See you around sometime, Horace, old boy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. See you around. So long, Bessemer, old buddy. <laughs> Almost cleared, Margaret. Deej, you'll bring in the last stack of dishes. And thanks, Miss Williamson. My, it's getting dark early tonight. Maybe it's going to rain. Oh, I hope it doesn't thunder. Things are bad enough with this burglar on the loose. Oh, don't worry, Margaret. But what if I'm sleeping, and then suddenly I hear my window screen slowly being removed? You see too many movies. That's the way David Bryan did it in the movie I saw last week. Well, if the burglar's as handsome as David Bryan, that might help a little. Say, that's what I call looking at the brighter side of things. Here's the rest of the dishes, Margaret. Oh, thank you. Who's oh, that thunder? Oh, I knew it was going to storm tonight. That's too bad. Did you have another date? I am not stepping a foot out of this house after it gets dark. Are you scared too, Margaret? Uh, well, let's put it this way. If I had a boyfriend on the police force, I'd feel better tonight. Hey, that's an idea. Oh, now stop it. You're both working yourselves up into a fine state. Margaret, why don't you come and sit in the living room with us after the dishes? Oh, thank you. There was a thunderstorm in the pool of blood, too. Uh, tonight, D.G., I recommend you reread Little Women. <laughs> Darn thunder. What's that? Looks like a man. Come out, come out, whoever you are. <laughs> oh, what? Oh. Oh, oh, it's a tree. Yeah. Who's that? Who's that? You tell me first. You tell me first. 
Oh, oh, it's you, Grando. Oh, oh, Horace. <laughs> oh, Bessemer. Oh, did you see anything? No, no, just you. Shh, not so loud. I can see Penny through the window there. Be careful. Oh. How did I know the bush was there? It's dark. I know, but be careful. Oh, be quiet. <laughs> what was it? Sue's bicycle. Where'd you leave your bicycle, Sue? Someplace out here. Well, Thine didn't bring it up on the porch before the rain started. Get behind the bush, Sue's coming. I, I, I think I'm going to sneeze. Oh, no, no. I, Hold it. I, I, I'm looking, but it's hard to see. I, here it is. <laughs> Hold it, Grando. Hold it. She's right here, Mother. All right here. Now come on in. Okay, sneeze. It went away. Now look, we, we better start patrolling instead of hiding behind a bush. You take the north side of the house, and I'll take the south. We can both check the backyard. All right, all right. The street light takes care of the front yard pretty much. Uh, yeah, now, you take your side, and we'll meet around back every now and then. Oh, and... we'll stop giving orders. You're not General McCarthy, you know. <laughs> I was hanging up the dish towel. I could have sworn somebody was tiptoeing past the kitchen. Oh, Margaret. Mother, I thought I saw a figure go by the window on this side of the house. How can one man be in two places at the same time? You're both being silly. I closed the windows upstairs, Mother. Thank you, Sue. Wait a minute. D.G., I thought I told you to do that. Well, I... Where's the nickel you promised me, D.G.? D.G., were you afraid to go upstairs? Kind of. You don't have to worry, D.G. That dead man under your bed won't hurt you. Mother! Uh, Sue, don't tease. Mother, I don't like this thunderstorm. Um, I tell you what let's do. Let's play the piano and sing some songs. It's silly huddling around like this. Besides, you're all beginning to give me the creeps, too. <laughs> doing inside. Look through the window. Yeah. They're all around the piano. You take the high road and I'll take the low road and I'll well, gee, it looks nice and cozy in there. Yeah. yeah. Well, this isn't doing our job. Let's get back to it. You take the high road. I'm in the north side and I'll take the south side this time. Who do you think you are? Eisenhower? What's next? Margaret, you choose the song now. Um, how about Stone Cold Dead in the Market? <laughs> Margaret! Let's do Three Blind Mice. We do that in school. All right, Sue, you take the first line, and then you come in next, E.G. Oh, and Mar <laughs> Did Margaret go out to the kitchen? I'm standing right behind you, Miss Wendell. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone knocked over something. I'm sorry it wasn't me that knocked it over. <laughs> well, I'll have to... Mother, don't go into the other room. Well, I just can't sit here. I wish the phone was in the living room. Who's there? Nobody's oh, going to oh, use that phone, and nobody will get hurt if they don't move. Oh, gee. Oh, boy, a stick-up, just like in the movies. <laughs> How dare you come into my house? How dare you? When somebody leaves a door unlocked, I come in. The back door. When I put the milk box out, I You forgot tight. to lock it. <laughs> That's right. Well, I have nothing of value in this house, so you'd better get out. I might have to tie you ladies up before you start yelling. That shouldn't be hard to do. We can't put up much of a fight. What do you do when there's a man in the house? Well, I... Uh... I suppose you look in first and... Then if there are only women, you feel safe. 
Now, look, lady. It doesn't make you much of a man, does it? If you had one speck of decency or chivalry, anything you might take in this house wouldn't be worth the fright you caused us. I don't like having guns around my children. I don't carry a gun. If I get caught, it ain't armed robbery. Oh, so you don't carry a gun. No. You just go around robbing homes with women in them. That makes you a real brave man. Lady, I... If you had children, would you like it very much if they had the wits scared out of them by someone like you? I don't like what you're saying. It's true. Miss Williamson, someone's on the porch. (laughs) Don't move. Don't move. It might be the police. I'll look out of the window. Stay right where you are. Is it the police? No. No, it looks like someone else is trying to sneak up on the porch. A convention. (laughs) Miss Williamson, what do we do? Uh, I don't know, Margaret. Don't worry. Don't worry, I'm not going to let anything happen to you. What? Not one speck of decency or chivalry, huh? Ma'am, just because I pick up a few things when people leave their doors unlocked don't mean I'm the all-American heel. (laughs) Now, turn off the lights in the hall there. All right. Whoever's moving around on the front porch don't want anybody to know he's there. Be careful. Don't worry. I'll just open this door quick and jump him. Don't get hurt. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stop it. Stop it. Get Mr. Wiggins. There's two of them, ma'am. I got both of them. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, scaring women and children like this. You may let them off now. I know them. Penny, we were just getting out of the rain. What were you two prowling? You were guarding my house. Yeah. Yes, Penny, and since the rain started, we figured there was no more danger. So we came up on the porch to get out of the rain. <laughs> Who's this fellow? Well, uh... I guess you'd better tell him, ma'am. What do you want me to tell them? Tell them the truth. But you gave yourself up to help us out. That's okay. What do I do now? Uh, do you really like your work? Not after tonight. Good. Now, come on in, everybody, and get drunk. No, no, Penny, this man. But, uh, Margaret, I think we could use some hot coffee. I know the judge and Mr. Wiggins could. Tell me up. And you'd like some coffee, too, wouldn't you, Mr.... Call me uh, Bill, ma'am. But who is Bill, Penny? He's our burglar. What? Penny! Oh, it's all right. He's done with that. And you and Mr. Wiggins are going to help with his probation. That's fair. Thanks, ma'am. But, Penny, he Oh, must... forget about it for now. Without Bill's help, you two might have scared us to death. Running around outside at this hour of the night. The Penny Singleton Show, which comes to you every Tuesday night at this time, featured Gail Gordon, Jim Backus, B. Benaderet, Sarah Selby, Mary Lee Robb, Sheila James, and Wally Mayer. The music was composed and conducted by Von Dexter. The Penny Singleton Show, written and produced by Robert Soderbergh and directed by Max Hutto, stars Penny Singleton. Good night. Keep well. <laughs> Three chimes mean good times on NBC. If you don't think people are funny, give Art Linkletter a chance to prove it to you. He's the jolly master of ceremonies who returns on Tuesday, September 19th, over most of these NBC stations, to give prizes away to people who merely prove what Art already knows. People are funny. Coming up, Charles Boyer on NBC. NBC presents The Penny Singleton Show.
on stage tonight from Hollywood, another of NBC's outstanding half-hour presentations, The Penny Singleton Show. Hello. Happy you're listening. A boy's best friend is his mother, but to Penny Williamson, a girl's best friend is her daughter. Penny, a young, attractive widow, has two, D.G., 13, and Sue, 8. And the other night, when she tiptoed quietly into their room, she found them sitting in bed in the dark, talking about her. We might as well face it, Sue. Mother's too innocent. She doesn't know anything about man. She sure hasn't explained him very well to me. Well, that's just it. Why, when it comes to men, Mother's a babe in the woods. Why, why, something terrible could happen to her. Sure it could. Something awful terrible. What could happen to her, D.G.? <laughs> well, you're too young. You wouldn't even know what I was talking about. Ah, oh, tell me, D.G. Yes, for Pete's sake, tell her, D.G. The suspense is killing me. <laughs> Mother, what are you doing in here? I came in to make sure you two were asleep. Now scoot under those covers. Okay. Well, I was only saying... Good night, Sue. Mm -hmm. Night. Well, I was just saying that you're young... Can it wait till morning, dear? Well, you're young and pretty and... Yes, in the morning, dear. Young and pretty and what? And attractive to men. Oh, I'm not. I mean, I... I am. Are we going to stay awake? (laughs) Of course you're attractive to men, Mother. Well, you certainly know how to dress. Just take a look at the women on those fashion calendars. They have nothing on you. Well, thank you, dear. The women on the men's calendars have nothing on them either. (laughs) (laughs) That's what Margaret said. Well, never mind what Margaret said. Deejee, why all this sudden concern about me and men? Well, golly, Mother, you wouldn't want to marry one, would you? Oh, I don't know. I've always heard they make the best husbands. <laughs> but suppose you suddenly decided to marry someone like, well, like Mr. Wiggins, your real estate partner. He's a man. He is? I mean, of course he is. <laughs> but I don't intend to marry Mr. Wiggins, so why worry about it? She's just sore because Tommy Trammell gave her the air. Oh. He did not. I'm just being aloof, that's all. I think we should all go up to Lake Panatog and be aloof for a week. Well, it's sweet of you to think of it, darling, but that costs money. But only five dollars a day. Special family rates. Golly, Mother, everybody goes away this time of the year, and even if it's only to Lake Panatawag, and it's so romantic. Yeah, frog hunting in the moonlight. (laughs) (laughs) May have tennis at the lodge and, and square dancing. And raccoons, too. Oh, please, Mother, please. Linda's going in the Sloan's. And Tommy Trammell. Oh, Tommy Trammell. I guess we don't want to go then if that old Tommy Trammell's going. Oh, he's not old, Mother. He still shaves with his mother's manicure scissors. <laughs> All right, if you're going to make fun of him. Oh, but, Deejee, darling, we're not making fun of him. Besides, I thought you were being aloof with Tommy. Well, that's just it. How can I be aloof if he's a hundred miles away? Well, I know, dear, but... Do you really want to go to Lake Padawag that badly? Oh, yes, Mother, more than anything. Well, I don't know exactly how we'll do it, but we'll do it. Oh, Mother, you're an angel, a perfect angel. Thank you, darling. In that case, I better go see if I can find an old miracle lying around. Williamson, are you going to drink that tea or just stir it to death? Uh, uh, what? Oh, oh yes, uh, I was just thinking. No. Uh, well, look at the morning paper, Miss Williamson. Uh, no, thanks. Say, Margaret, how could I make an extra hundred dollars quickly? Oh, well, that's easy. You could, um... Uh, uh, well, why don't you, um... Uh, or if you just, uh... Uh, would a dollar seventy-five help you, honey? <laughs> I'm afraid not, Margaret. I promised the girls last night I'd take them up to Lake Padawag for a week. Oh, there's the place. Mm-hmm. 
Did you ever notice how romantic the moon is on water, Mrs. Williamson? Leonard Frybacker took me rowing in the park last night. It was just beautiful. <laughs> rowing in the park does sound romantic, all right. Yeah. I can hardly move a muscle this morning. <laughs> Well, I don't know, but I've just got to find some way to pay for a week at Lake Padawan. Why don't you borrow a few dollars from your so-called partner, Mr. Wiggins? He just uses it to stuff his shoes. <laughs> no, thanks. I don't want to be obligated to Horace Wiggins. Besides, I think he must spend everything he makes on pills. He even has pills to take when he gets sick from taking pills. <laughs> <laughs> ah, if you had the money this young what's-his-name in the paper has, you could go around the world twice without a transfer. Who's young what's-his-name? My, his picture's right here in the paper. Let's see, I'll find it for you. All right, here it is. Randolph Donahue the third. Donahue? The Peppermint King? His son. He's in town to buy property for his father's new peppermint factory. Boy, is he smooth. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. Tall, dark, and why do I get something like Leonard Frybacker? <laughs> uh, let me see that paper, Margaret. No, right here. Well, that's him. Supposed to be quite a ladies' man. Mm, I know the type. He may be a man, but I doubt if they're ladies. He is kind of wolfy looking, isn't he? How can anything that beady eyed make a living off of peppermint? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if. If what, Miss Williamson? If I could sell Mr. Randolph Donahue III that vacant property out near the box factory, I'd have more than enough for a week at Lake Padawag. Oh, not if Mr. Wiggins finds out you're going to use the extra bonus to go away for a week. Then all I have to do is to get to Mr. Donahue before Mr. Wiggins does. How? Oh. In my new red dress and hat. Miss Williamson, that dress that fits you like a... Certainly. The one with the slit up the... Yep. <laughs> and the top down to... Mrs. Williamson, you wouldn't dare. Oh, wouldn't I? There's more than one way to skin a cat, Margaret. (laughs) Yeah, but this cat's a wolf. (laughs) Then set out the traps. Little Red Riding Hood is going upstairs and slip into the bait. But, operator, I must speak to Mr. Donahue. It's important. Did you tell him it was Mr. Wiggins of Wiggins and Williamson? I told him, sir. Well, what did he say? He said he didn't care if you were Sam of Uncle and Sam. (laughs) But I tell you, it's important that I speak to Mr. Donahue. Morning, Horace. Oh, uh, why, 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 uh, yes, Aunt Prunella. (laughs) Yeah, yes, yeah, Aunt Prunella. I will, Aunt Prunella. (laughs) Goodbye, Aunt Prunella. (laughs) Who was that? Aunt Prunella? Yeah, well, yeah. Yes, sort of. Uh, What? Why, Penny, you look positively ravishing today. You mean different than I usually look? Uh, Well, no, I didn't mean that exactly, but you usually wear a a suit to the office. And that dress, I mean, it's so, well, the, the, uh... The skirt is, uh, and the top is too, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I, I, I think it's time for my green pill. <laughs> uh, care for green pill, pet? No, of course you don't. <laughs> I think you'd better push your eyeballs back in your head before they start rolling around the office. <laughs> Penny, dear, why won't you marry me and let me give you the things you should have? What, green pills? <laughs> if you like, anything your heart desires. Well, right now, my heart desires to make a deal so I can afford to take the girls up to Lake Padawag for a week. But, Penny, a whole week without you? Besides, how can you afford a week at Lake Padawag? Oh, uh, um, well, I, I'm going to, um, to close a deal this morning. Deal? What kind of a deal? Oh, uh, uh, just a business deal. What kind of a business deal? Oh, you wouldn't be interested, Horace. Oh. I'm just going to sell that dirty old property out by the box factory. Oh, you're just going to sell that dirty old property out by the box factory? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a coincidence? <laughs> 
So am I. Oh. Well, I guess uh, I'd better get going then, I guess. Go away. Well, I'll go with you, Penny. Oh. Well, toodaloo. I'm going this way. Well, toodaloo. So am I. (laughs) But uh, I'm going down to the Hotel Drake. So am I. Penny, Penny, wait a minute. What? Penny, are you by any chance going to see Randolph Donahue III? Yes, I am. But you can't. I forbid it. I absolutely forbid it. You forbid it? (laughs) I should have known. So that's why you got all dressed up. So you could use your feminine wiles on him. Well, I forbid it, Penny. You do? Yes, I do. Horace. Yes, Penny? You know something? What? Last one down there is an old for sale sign. Penny, wait for me! Penny! Boy! Penny! Penny, don't pick up that phone. I certainly will pick up this phone. I got here first, and I'm going to call Mr. Donahue. He only got here first because my car stalled at that stoplight. That's what wins wars, Horace. Besides, do you know what kind of a man this Donahue is? No. How many kinds are there? Switchboard. Uh, Mr. Donahue, please. Mr. Donahue, just a moment, please. It's nothing but a ladies' man, Penny. A dallier, pure and simple. Maybe not so pure, but simple anyway. That's what he'll do. He'll dally with your affections. Good. My affections haven't been dallied with in years. <laughs> Penny, bite your tongue. Now, don't try to talk me out of the big half of this commission, Horace. I'm going to take D.G. and Sue to Lake Padawag for a week come Dilly Dally or Donahue. Hello. Uh, hello. Is this Mr. Donahue? Well, I must be in heaven. You sound like an angel. No, I'm... Oh, oh, I don't really. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> do, uh, do angels have names, Angel? Names? Mm. Mine's Penny Angel. I mean, mine's Penny Williamson. <laughs> of Williamson and Wiggins, real estate brokers. Wiggins and Williamson, if you don't mind. Real estate? I thought all women real estate brokers were baritones. <laughs> you sound like about, uh... Oh, something around uh, five foot two? Three. Eyes of blue. Green, bluish green. Oh. What's he want, a description of the property? <laughs> uh, about 112? Eleven. Tell him it's all out by the box factory. Uh, brunette, huh? Blonde. Oh. That doesn't sound like any property out by the box. <laughs> Look, Mr. Donahue, this is all very charming, but I have a prop... a business deal I'd like to talk over with you. Why, of course, Angel. Of course. Anytime you say. Well, how about right now? I'm down in the lobby. Lobby? Well, why didn't you say so, Angel? Standing down there in that cold, drafty old lobby. <laughs> Come on up to my room. Good, I'll be right... Up to your room? Sure, Angel. Room 612. Don't knock. I'll meet you at the elevator. Yes, but... But I... I I, I can't. I I mean, I... Well, I... Oh, dear. Don't louse up the deal, Penny. Don't louse up the deal. I'll go up. But if you go up, I won't be able to take the girls to Lake Padawag. Well, that's what wins wars, Penny, remember? (laughs) Angel. Are you still there, Angel? Yes, I'm still here. And Mr. Wiggins will be up there. Who? Goodbye. No, wait, Angel, Angel! All right, Horace, you win. Go on up and close the deal. (laughs) Good, Penny, good. Oh, no hard feelings. Oh, no, of course not, Horace. No hard feelings. I guess that washes up Deejee's week at Lake Padawag, though. Some angel I turned out to be. Oh, I imagine she'll still think so, Penny. Maybe so, Horace. But I'll bet I'm the first angel that ever muffed a miracle. Two of the 
Penny Singleton Show. Well, Penny has lost a chance to sell some very valuable property, so she won't be able to take her daughters, D.G. and Sue, to Lake Padawag for a vacation. And we can't blame her for feeling low as she starts to leave Donahue's hotel. Oh, miss. Pardon me, miss. Oh, what? I just wanted to look at you. Oh, well, go right ahead and look. You seem to be enjoying yourself. Yes, those are feet. I have two, one left and one right. Oh, and and those are legs. I also have two of those. And these are arms. Oh, excuse me. You're still on the legs. Ready? Oh, a a blonde hair. Oh, wait a minute. You're getting ahead of me. Bluish green eyes. About 111. Five feet. Angel. Oh, you must be Randolph Donahue the third. All the other angels I know call me Randy. Mm-hmm. And their wings drop off five seconds later. Ah. So you're Miss Williamson, huh? Correction, please. I'm Mrs. Williamson. Oh. I'm a widow. Oh. What? <laughs> I mean, uh, oh. Oh. Say, I just remembered. Where's Mr. Wiggins? He went up to your room to make a deal with you. Mr. Wiggins? Is that your partner's name? Yes, I wonder what's happened to Mr. Wiggins. Probably out in the cabbage patch with Mrs. Wiggins. <laughs> He hates cabbage, and there is no Mrs. Wiggins. Well, don't worry, Angel. I know where he is at all times. You do? How? Well, all I have to do is watch the lights over the elevator. (laughs) I gave the operator $5 to ride him up and down while I talk to you. Oh, please. Oh, please, you've got to get him out of there. Then we can all sit down and discuss this property he and I handle. How about dinner tonight, hmm? Uh, Mr. Donahue, you don't realize what this can do to Mr. Wiggins. He gets sick just looking at an up escalator. Mr. Donahue, all I came down here for was to interest you in some property for your father's new factory. Good. We can talk about it over dinner. Now, please, stop the elevator and let Mr. Wiggins out. Dinner. You're the hungriest man I ever saw. (laughs) Oh, all right, dinner. Now, will you let... Of course, sure. Come on. Uh, That's a promise, huh? That's a promise. Eight o'clock? With your appetite, I don't see how you can wait that long. Eight o'clock? Eight o'clock, yes. Oh, here comes the elevator now. Penny. Oh, Oh, Boris, you look terrible. I've been sick. Still, Mrs. Williamson, I'm still fixing your hair. Oh, excuse me, Margaret. I thought you were finished. Oh, well, there I am now. Oh, boy, do you look gorgeous. Well, if Mr. Donahue sees you in that dress, he'll just about take off and fly. That wouldn't surprise me. He had his motor running all morning. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, you don't think this dress is too, uh, well, too... Oh, of course not. Everybody's wearing them to something these days. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't back out now. If I get Mr. Donahue to buy that property tonight, we'll be off to Lake Padawan. Oh, you sell it. I've got all the faith in the world in you, Mrs. Williamson. Oh, thanks, Margaret. I wish I did. Daddy, who, where are you? Is that Ida Duncan? Oh, yes. Here comes old ask me no questions. I'll tell you all I know. <laughs> Margaret, she'll hear you. I'm in here putting on some lipstick, Ida. Come on in. Oh, I've been looking all over for you, Penny. Penny, that dress. Like it? But that neckline. My dear, you're not going to wear that neckline. Why not? What's the use of having a neck if you can't show it? (laughs) Golly, Mother, you look simply terrific in that dress. Oh, I'll bet he'll like it. Uh, Penny, who will like it? Uh, Thank you, D.G., dear. Sue, how do you like it? I don't care much for evening gowns. No pockets to carry lizards in. (laughs) Sue, stop shooting that pop gun in the house. Oh, oh, there he is. Who is? Do I look all right, Margaret? How's my hair? Is my lipstick on straight? Well, you look fine, Mrs. Williamson. Much too good for him. For whom, Penny? Of course, if you don't want to tell me who this man is, <laughs> it's all right with me, uh, provided I find out. Uh, this man is Randolph Donahue the Third, And before you get any ideas, Ida, the reason I'm going out with Mr. Donahue is business. 
Strictly Business. You know you're an angel, Angel? Why, Mr. Donahue, I'll bet you say that to all us angels. I'm serious. You dance too divinely for any mortal. And you dance too close for any comfort. But I want to be close to you, Angel. Well, if you were any closer, you'd be behind me. <laughs> Come on now. Why, I can't even breathe. going to discuss that property out by the box factory. Well... Come on, let's sit down and talk about it. Oh, why don't we talk about it out on the terrace, Angel? It's much cozier, huh? Uh, nothing doing. Oh. Now then, the property runs 1,500 feet Angel, along the... Angel, who can keep their mind on 1,500 feet of plowed ground when there's you <laughs> and a moon? Uh, now wait a minute, Mr. Donahue. You're I... a very desirable creature, you know that? But I, I... Doesn't anything happen when I hold your hand in mine? No, 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 wait... Don't pull your hand away, Angel. <laughs> but I, I mean... There's I a moon really out are... on the terrace, Angel. Doesn't the moon do things to you? Well, yes. It makes me feel, well, warm and tender and affectionate. Well, I was beginning to think you weren't human. (laughs) Well, after all, I am a woman. We're incurably romantic, you know. Ah, then a moon does do things to you, huh? Yes, a moon does do things to me, Mr. Donahue. It reminds me of a brisk autumn sky... A little white church under some elm trees. A honeymoon cottage overlooking the sea. A husband going away to war. Is that all a moon does to you, Angel? No. No, a moon also reminds me of Lake Padawag. <laughs> Lake Wadawag? <laughs> no. Oh, you wouldn't understand, Mr. Donahue. You see, you only think I'm an angel. I know two little girls who are sure of it. Well, thank you so much for a lovely evening, Mr. Donahue. Oh, but wait a minute, Angel. Aren't you even going to invite me in for a little uh, nightcap? I'm afraid the only nightcaps we have around here are milk and cookies. As you... Milk and cookies? Oh, sure. We get absolutely homogenized every night. (laughs) Good night, Mr. Donahue. I'll bring all the papers around in the morning and we'll close the deal for that property. Oh, but wait a minute. I haven't said definitely that I'd buy it, Angel. What? Yeah, well, I looked at it this afternoon. Seems to be just a thing, but, uh... Yeah, I think we ought to go in and talk about it. Oh, all right. <laughs> but just for a minute. Mm. Let's go in here in the living room and... <laughs> Good heavens, what was that? <laughs> why, why, it's Margaret. Margaret, Margaret, wake up. Who's Margaret? My housekeeper. Margaret! Does she always mm. sleep sitting on the stairs? <laughs> oh, no. Sometimes she lies down. <laughs> Margaret, wake up. What? Oh, oh. Was I snoring? Uh, no, you were just breathing out loud. Why didn't you go to bed? Well, as soon did you want to know when you got home. All right, Margaret. You can tell them I'm home. Yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, Margaret, mm-hmm. what's the telephone doing off the hook? The telephone off the hook? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, that's Mr. Wiggins. He wanted to know when you got home, too. <laughs> He's been sitting on the phone waiting for you. Oh, of all the ridiculous... Uh, excuse me, Mr. Donahue, I'd better talk to him. You go on in the living room. Sure, Angel. Good night, Horace. Oh, Penny, thank heavens you're home. Horace, what in the world are you doing? I've been listening to Margaret snore for the last half hour. <laughs> Sounded like a small boy taking a trombone lesson. Well, stop being so silly and go to bed. Penny, is it silly for me to worry about you when you're out with a man like Donahue? Are you sure you're not more worried about whether I sold him that property? Didn't close the deal, did you? No, not yet. (laughs) Good. Oh, that's a shame. But I will before he leaves here. Well, better luck next to... Leaves? There? Yes, 
He's in the living room waiting to talk over the deal. Don't move. The man's a demon with women, Penny. Sit right where you are. Breathe deeply. You'll need your strength in case you have to struggle. I'll be right over. Horace, will you stop being... Don't worry, Penny. Old Horace will be right there. Goodbye. Horace. Horace. Old Horace. No. What's the trouble, Angel? Your wings are dragging. Uh, Mr. Donahue, I'm going to put my cards on the table. Will you or will you not take that property out by the box factory? Why, of course I will, Angel. Fine. I drew up the papers this afternoon. They're right here in my purse. Oh. Yeah. There. Sign right there. Here? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How's that? Well, I guess that takes care of Mr. Horace Wiggins. And all you need is to someone to take care of you, Angel. Oh, now, wait a minute, Mr. You Donahue. need a pair of strong arms around oh, you. Oh, um, I'm just as happy with them the way they are, hanging from my shoulders. Now, <laughs> don't pull away from me, Angel. I... Uh, please. Are you all right, Mrs. Uh, Williamson? Now I am, Margaret. Is that Mr. Casanova? Uh... <laughs> No, Sue, darling. This is Mr. Donahue. These are my two daughters, Dee Dee and Sue. Oh, Hi, hello, Dee Dee. Hello, Sue. You? Does that little one always carry a shotgun? Oh, yeah, just a pop gun. Oh. We were worried about your mother. Oh, but I'm all right, Dee Dee. Mr. Donahue and I were just signing a contract between us. Does that mean you're going to be my father? <laughs> Father? Uh, Mr. Donahue, you're turning white. Daddy. Oh, no. Mr. Donahue, you're turning green. Yippee, we got a man. Oh, I wish I was dead. Mr. Donahue, you're turning purple. You'd better pick a color and stick to it. I gotta get out of here. You need a doctor. If I stayed here, I'd need a lawyer. Good night, Mrs. Williamson. <laughs> We sure got rid of him in a hurry. Yes, whose idea was that? Margaret. It sure did work, too. I'll say it did, Sue. And what's more, I got the deal before Mr. Wiggins did. Oh, say, that's right. Uh huh. Tomorrow we leave for Lake Padawag. Golly, Mother, really? Oh, you are an angel. Penny, open the door. It's me, old Horace. Oh. Uh uh-uh, oh, it's Mr. Wiggins. Another wolf on the doorstep. Why, he's not the wolf, Margaret. He's the goat. (laughs) Penny Singleton will return in just a moment. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Show, which comes to you every Tuesday evening at this time, featured B. Benaderet, Hal March, Gerald Moore, Sarah Selby, Mary Lee Robb, and Sheila James. The music is composed and conducted by Von Dexter. The script is by Jack Crutcher and Doris Gilbert. Directed by Ray Dietrich and stars Penny Singleton. Good night. Keep well. And this is Hal Gibney inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday evening for the Penny Singleton Show, an NBC presentation. Three times mean good times on NBC. Penny Singleton Show. On stage tonight from Hollywood, the Penny Singleton Show. Hello, Kathy, you're listening. Penny in our story is Mrs. Penny Williamson, 
Navy widow and mother of two daughters, 13-year-old D.G. and 8-year-old Sue. In addition to running a home and raising a family, Penny sells real estate. It's morning at the Williamson house, and Penny is already at the breakfast table as D.G. enters. Morning, Mother. Morning, D.G. Isn't Sue dressed? Margaret has breakfast almost ready. Well, Sue came downstairs before I did. Maybe she went out to feed her rabbit. Mother, isn't there anything we can do about getting all of her animals outdoors? Last night, her turtle climbed out of the bowl again and got lost somewhere in our room. Haven't you found it? No, and I'm afraid to put on a shoe without looking into it. Gee, I wish we were rich enough to have a big house with a bedroom all to myself. Sharing a room with Sue's like sharing a room with Frank Buck. <laughs> oh, she'll get over the fish and animal stage someday. Mother, have you ever considered looking beyond Judge Grendel or Mr. Wiggins and maybe marrying a millionaire? There aren't many millionaires floating around these days. Well, every once in a while I read about somebody making a Cinderella marriage. I don't think I'm the glass slipper type. And another thing, Dee Dee, I wish you wouldn't pick up the town's attitude toward me, the judge, and my business partner. Well, they're always in there pitching to become our father. I know, but I can't help it if they take advantage of my friendship. See, hey, she'll be... Where's Sue? I think she's outside. Dee Dee, would oh, you call... I'll call her. Oh, I see her through the window. She's talking to somebody. <laughs> I give up, Margaret. Yeah. You can let go my ear now. No, I'll get the egg. Morning, Mother. Good morning, Sue. And hello again, drought. Mother, don't let her call me that. Well, I don't even know what a drought is. Combination droop and drip. <laughs> no, sir. Uh, eat your weedy, Sue. And don't call your sister a, uh, uh, what was that word? Drought. Mother. Anyway, don't call her that again. Now I wish we could have two houses. One for me and one for her. Did you, darling, beloved sister? Pass the milk, please. Mother, she's... Being... I'm being sweet. Do I have to kiss you to get the milk? <laughs> now, stop it, you two. How much salary does a judge get, Mother? Oh, D.G., stop trying to marry me off. I've been up on my hands with you and your sister. D.G. Grundle. D.G.'s the stepdaughter of Judge Grundle, you know. Hey, that doesn't sound so bad. Look, when you're old enough, you can get married and change your name to anything you want. Allow me the same consideration. Sue Wiggins. Sue Wiggins of the Cabbage Patch. <laughs> and I'm not marrying Horace Wiggins, either. Here's the egg. Uh, thank you, Margaret. Now, eat your eggs, girls, and let's stop all this talk about marriage. Oh, last night I dreamt I got married. Who oh, you did, Margaret? Who'd you marry? Richard Winmark. <laughs> Richard Winmark? But he's so mean. Oh, he can push me down a flight of stairs any time he wants to. <laughs> I'll see who it is. Sue, you go upstairs right after breakfast and look for your turtle. Easy told me he was lost again. All right. And when I think of him crawling around someplace up there, maybe when I'm looking for him, I'll find my lizard. He's lost in our bedroom, too. <laughs> A lizard, too? Mother, now you know why I'm aging so fast. Well, I'm going to be an absolute hag at 15. Uh, Telegram for you, Mrs. Williamson. Oh, uh, thank you, Margaret. Well, maybe the messenger boy wants it back. Who's it from, Mother? Just a second here. Hmm. That's odd. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Duncan. If it's private news, Mother, watch it. Here comes Mrs. D. Well, oh. Oh, good morning, Penny dear. Oh, good afternoon, Dee Dee. Hello, Mrs. Duncan. Oh, uh, Penny, I just saw the messenger boy leave. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, bad news. Hmm? Uh, the telegram. You, you know, your telegram. Is it from your sister? What happened to her? Sciatica? Oh. Hold it, Ida. It's not from my sister. Oh, well, of course, it's none of my business. I, I certainly don't mean to pry. Seems curious, or snoopy, or... Aren't you going to tell me, your dearest friend? I can't figure out who it's from. It's signed, The Old Tar. Who, who, who? The Old Tar? Well, what does it say? Maybe that'll give us a clue. No, Ida. It just says... See you soon. Oh! <laughs> oh, now, really, Ida. Well, it's all right. It's all right. If it's something you want to keep from me, well, keep it from me. That's the way things are. Is it? That's not the way things are. But if you choose to think so, there's nothing I can say. Well, it's all right. I'll be running along. Goodbye, Ida. You 
work keeping anything from us? No, darling. Look at the telegram yourself. See you soon. Sign the old tar. The old tar. I've heard someone called that. Like a nickname, but I... <laughs> I just don't remember. Miss Williamson, was that telegram something important or serious? No, Margaret. Why? Well, Mrs. Duncan ran around to the kitchen and asked me if I knew what it was about. <laughs> well, Ida's still trying. Matter of fact, so am I. The old car. Hmm. Good morning, Mr. Wiggins. Oh, oh, good morning, Penny. Uh, Mr. Wiggins, have you ever heard of the old car? Uh, yes, it's something I feel like kicking out of Judge Grundle when he gets that moon-eyed look over you. <laughs> You're no help at all. All morning I've been trying to think... Oh, oh, so have I. I've been trying to think about you and me. Pretty you and plain old me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wiggins, this morning at breakfast, D.G. entertained me with Cinderella. Maybe at lunch I won't mind beauty and the beast. Let's leave Grundle out of it. Does my being a little older than you make it hard for you to see me as a husband and a father for D.G. and Sue? Age has nothing to do with it. I enjoy the company of mature men, as long as they behave like mature men. Well, uh, let's not get too keen about mature men. After all, Judge Grundle is older than I am. He's a year older. Yes, well, I... I'm... I'm cuter. <laughs> Wiggins. Thank heavens. Anything to change the subject. Williamson and... Oh, Mrs. Williamson. Margaret. Have you ever seen a dream walking? Well... I did. He just walked in here to see you. What are you talking about? Uh, something wrong at home, Penny? You know your telegram this morning. I know the telegram. Nothing's wrong, Mr. Wiggins, I don't think. It's Admiral Paul Foster, the children's godfather. <gasps> the old star. Who? What? Who? Huh? Huh? Margaret, I'll be right home. This is wonderful. I'll be right there, right there. Well, Penny, what's wonderful? Hey, where are you going? Home. Oh, where's my hat? Hey, you're as excited as, as, a, as a kid at Christmas. What happened? Here's my hat. Call you later. Yeah. Tell her. Hmm. Did Margaret tell her? <laughs> Better call Ida Duncan about this. <laughs> It uh, certainly did. The most terrible thing happened. What? 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 What was it? I left the water running in the kitchen sink and it flooded all over the floor. Oh, what's so terrible about that? Well, you'll see. This morning, Penny got a telegram from the old tar, and she pretended she didn't even know who sent it. Oh, go on, go on. Well, it worried me all morning. About 15 minutes ago, I was washing the dishes when I saw a car pull up in front of Penny's, and I ran to the window. I mean, I left the water running in the sink. Ida, get out of the sink and get back in the car. <laughs> well, the most distinguished man got out and went into Penny's house. Oh, Horace, he was utterly divine looking. Oh, no. Oh, he was a mature looking man, but... Oh, my. <laughs> and I think he's something in the Navy. He had lots of gold braid on the uniform. He looked like A.C. Pinza. A.C. Pinza? And in uniform? This is terrible. Oh, no, the terrible part was when I got back to my kitchen. Oh, it's bad enough as it is. Now, don't exaggerate, Ida. I'm not exaggerating. The water ran over the top of the sink. It was all over the floor. And, and I think I'm going to have to try a new linoleum. And that's terrible. Oh, no. What'd you say, Harry? I, I didn't hear you. What'd you say? Maybe the line went dead. No, Ida. I did. <laughs> <laughs> the old star. Why, Paul Foster. To think I'd forgotten calling my husband Skipper that one night. And I turned around and there you were. Oh, well, I really dear. can't blame you for forgetting. That was eight or nine years ago. And now you're an admiral. My goodness. When did that happen? During my tour of duty in the Mediterranean. Penny, darling, you haven't changed a bit. Thank you. 
And, Paul, I think those extra gold stripes on your sleeve and that silver in your hair make you handsomer than ever. Uh, uh, careful, Penny. All this goes to my head. Oh. <laughs> anyway, Paul, welcome to Middleton. Oh, thank you, darling. I wanted to see you and the children, and I also want to draw up a new will and, well, add some things that I've already planned to leave my godchildren. Oh, Paul, you've done so much already. Why not? I haven't a chick or child of my own. It'd make me very happy to do it for them. Now, where are my godchildren? Well, one of them's digging worms, and the other's at her girlfriend. Margaret's gone to get them. What are you doing home, Mother? I was right in the middle of digging worms when... Oh! You, this is Admiral Foster. He's your godfather. Well, well, the last time I saw you, Sue, you were just a baby. And the cutest baby I ever saw. Ah. Uh... Well, that's no way to greet Admiral Foster. Do I salute him or kiss him? Both might be nice. Mother, Mother, what's the matter? Lois and I were giving each other permanence, and Margaret came and... Oh, a guess. My hair is half in curlers. D.G., do you remember him? Hi, D.G. Golly, Captain Foster. And now, Admiral. Well, you're my godfather. I just barely remember, You're but... doing well. You were only five then. When at five, I certainly didn't appreciate him. <laughs> By the way, D.G., I brought something for you and Sue. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see. Which is which? Oh, yeah. Now, this is yours, Sue. I hope you like it. Oh, thanks. And, D.G., this is for you. Do you like music? Do I like music? Tell him, Mother. <laughs> A book about animals. Oh, Admiral, anchors away. <laughs> You're welcome, Sue. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I... Mother, look. Look, Sue, South Pacific Records, a whole album, piano. How nice. Oh, gee, thanks, Admiral. You're quite welcome, D.G. Uh, Mother, may I play one, please? Just one, please. Of course. You did very well, Paul. Come you on, You fine, well planted girls, Benny. Now, yeah, they're probably putting it on for your benefit, Paul. If you were around here a while. Well, I wish I could be, but I'm driving through the San Diego to take over a new job in the Pacific. Not even time out for a day or two, will No, Penny, I'm sorry. And that reminds me, driving into Middleton, I was stopped by a motorcycle officer, and we both discovered my driver's license had expired. Do you uh, think we could take care of that as well as the will at the city hall or the courthouse? Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Williamson. Uh, yes, Margaret. Uh, about lunch. H-O-T or C-O-L-D? <laughs> <laughs> Let me take you and the girls to lunch, Betty. That would be nice. <laughs> oh, I I'll get it. Uh, now, Paul, about Dee Dee and Sue. I I'm really ready. want to do it, Penny, and there's no better time than now. Then I'll phone Judge Grundle. He can help you, I know. <laughs> Uh, Margaret, I I, um, I, 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 I don't want to interrupt Mrs. Uh, Williamson, but I will. If, if, if she's coming back to the office, I... No, 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 no. She's going out to lunch with Admiral Foster. Admiral? Uh-huh. What? What's that music? Oh, no. Margaret, does he look like H.C. Opinza? Yes, he is kind of pinjay. <laughs> What an enchanted day this has turned out to be. Uh, are you coming in? No, I was... No, I'm not. I'm going down and see Judge Grundle. Maybe between the two of us we can wash that man right out of her hair. We'll be... of the Penny Singleton Show. It's a little later, and we find Penny upstairs in her room getting dressed for her luncheon with Admiral Foster. D.G. is just coming in. Mother! Yes, dear, all dressed? Yes, but look at my hair. One half has a wave, and the other side just... well, just hangs there. Where I have. After lunch, we're going down to the courthouse. I tried to get Judge Grundle, but he was in court. His secretary said she'd handle things. I'm all ready, Mother. Fine, dear. Well, while I'm waiting, I'm going to play another one of those South Pacific records. Mother. Yes, dear. White gloves. Now, where are my white gloves? Would you mind if I join the Navy when I'm a few years older? <laughs> oh, you like the Admiral, don't you? Aw, uh, 
Cut it out, Mother. <laughs> well, I can't think of a nicer man for you to have a crush on. Uh, Mrs. Williamson. Yes, Margaret. Do go on downstairs and, and tell your godfather I'll be right down. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Margaret. What? Well, with the fleet in, it slipped my mind. <laughs> well, he didn't want to say, he just turned and left, too. Mr. Wiggins? Mr. Wiggins? What did he want? I don't know. But he looked more uncomfortable than a Marine at a tea party. The court will recess until 1.30. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Judge Grundle. Hmm? Hmm? Wiggins. Uh, hurry, hurry, hurry. Huh? What's the matter? What's the matter? Oh, I thought you'd never get finished. Well, Wiggins, what's on your mind, if any? <clears throat> Judge, I uh, realize that uh, we aren't exactly friends. True. And when it comes to Penny Williamson, we're considerably less than friends. So true. <laughs> You've heard of Ezio Pinza, haven't you? Of course I have. The nearest thing to Ezio Pinza in this town happens to be, in all modesty, me. <laughs> You think I'm kidding about this, don't you? You, you don't believe it. Well, just go ahead. Call Penny. Find, find out for yourself. Oh, I, I think this is silly, but I'll call. I'll well, call. I, I'll, I'll tell you something serious is going on. Oh, Wiggins, yes. this is Middleton, not the island of Bali High. Now, relax. Hello? Hello? This is... Ooh. Hello? What is it, Judge? Hello? Well, what's the matter? You look awful. Bali High is calling. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I have the wrong number, Mary. I mean, Miss Martin. Is that you, Judge Randall? Uh, no, you, uh, you've got the wrong number. No, I haven't. You have. Is that you, Judge? Hello? Hello? Uh, never mind, never mind. What happened? Well, I I heard music. Now, now wait a minute. Did you see this Admiral Pinza? No, no, but Ida Duncan did. Ida Duncan? What in the name of Blackstone am I getting riled up about? Everything I know is based on something she says. She's notoriously unreliable. Oh, this is ridiculous. Well, I just... You come in here all wild-eyed and make up my time, and uh, I've got a dozen things to do during recess. If you'll excuse me, I've got to check these messages on my desk. Well, my time's valuable, too, but you, you'll see. Go on, Doctor. Wait, wait. Come back. All right, fine. What, what's wrong now? You were right, Horace. I call you Horace because... And it looks like there's nothing to stop us from being friends now. Buddy. What? <laughs> this message from Miss Hodge, my secretary. <clears throat> Mrs. Williamson called about the Admiral and getting the license for him. <laughs> Life! <laughs> you, 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 you. <laughs> it says here, Mrs. Williamson wants you to handle the legal part of their affair. Admiral Foster and Mrs. Williamson will be in before court resumes this afternoon. Miss Hodge. Um... Married license. Obviously, she wants me to marry them. Well, I guess we will be friends. Bessemer. Gosh, I like eating in a restaurant, Admiral. I'm glad. And all the extra plates and things they put on a table. It's like they didn't care who had to wash the dishes. I still wish I could figure out what was the matter with Mr. Wiggins. Uh, he's your real estate partner? Yes. And Judge Grendel is also a good friend of ours. I know that was the judge on the phone, and something was wrong with him, too. They're in love with Mother. Oh, E.G. Judge Grendel gave me a hard code last week. I named him Ronald Reagan. That was before I met you, of course, Admiral. Oh, you <laughs> you named him after me. Uh, don't worry, Paul. You'll get it. There's bound to be an Admiral Paul Foster around the house soon, even though you're away. <laughs> oh, Penny, it's good to see you and the children so well and happy. And it's nice you can depend on your two friends, like the judge and your partner, Wiggins. I'm glad it shows. Now, hurry, girls, with your dessert, and let's get to the courthouse before Judge Grendel's afternoon session starts. <laughs> show just cause why these parties should not be legally joined in Oh, no. Cut it out, Bessie. <laughs> well, if it gets you, what do you think it does to me? I'll be marrying her. 
to someone else. Let's see if I remember the rest of it. Oh, no. Uh, let him speak now or hereafter hold his speech. Oh, Fanny, no! <laughs> right, you can't, Fanny. You... I'm... Oh, all right, I'm trying to rehearse. <clears throat> do you, Admiral, take this woman? <laughs> I can't do it. I feel like Walter Pigeon marrying Greer Goss and after Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> Oh, come in, come in. Hello, Judge, Mr. Wiggins. Annie, Annie. Hi, Mr. Wiggins. Oh, hello, Sue. Hello, Dee Dee. Now, I'd like you both to meet Admiral Paul Foster. Admiral Paul Foster. Admiral Paul Foster. Now, I'd like you both to meet Admiral Paul Foster. Paul, these are my very good friends, Judge Grendel and Mr. Wiggins. Glad to know you. Huh. Hmm. Oh. Judge, Mr. Wiggins. Please, please, let's get this over with. You have the license, I presume? No, and I'm in rather a hurry for that. I appreciate your kindness, Judge. Uh, Judge, that license. I mean, I talked to your secretary. Oh, then she's attended to it, so we may as well proceed. Is little Sue the flower girl? No, I'm an animal girl. <laughs> Wait a minute, everybody. Must we stretch this moment of misery any further? Huh? Take her hand, Admiral. I... Glad to, but I don't know what this is. Custom, custom. I can't walk. <laughs> you better come back here. I think you're the best man. I can't go through this without a rehearsal anyway. Let's start again. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here. I think I've seen this in a movie someplace. <laughs> seen it, I've been through it. We are gathered here this day to unite this man and this woman. Uh, Judge, uh, I'm a bachelor, and when I get through making out my will, am I still going to be a bachelor? <laughs> Please. We are gathered here this day to make out a will. Will! At last. Judge, Judge, hold everything. I think we almost had a father there. <laughs> A will? A will? What will? Admiral Foster is D.G. and Sue's godfather. He wants to name them in his will. We thought you'd help us draw up the papers, Judge Grundle. Yeah, but, uh, what about that license? Driver's license. Did you two really think we were getting married? Oh, well, we, uh, I, I mean, we were, we were uh, confused about something. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to know you, Admiral Foster. Explain that dearly beloved speech. Uh, well, Penny, it was a joke. <laughs> yeah, it was a joke, that was. We went really upset where we were. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Inside, I'm going to ask Uncle Margaret, does you look like A.C.O. Pinson? <laughs> Imagine you looking like A.C.O. Why, Paul, there is a strong resemblance. Hmm? You do. Yeah, I would imagine that. Yeah, well, wait a minute, Judge. Huh? Penny thinks he does, too. Hmm? Come to think of it, Paul, I don't know how you stayed a bachelor. Judge, bachelor. Still a bachelor. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Are you two starting to build this up again? Oh, no, 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 no. Believe me, it's farthest thing from my mind. None of this would have happened if Wiggins hadn't interrupted me in court during the state versus H.C. Pinzer. I mean, no, no wait, don't blame it. Don't blame it all on me. You're a great judge. You don't even know the difference between a marriage license and a driver's license. Yes, I thought you were Penny's closest friend. We are. Penny, you know I've always been devoted to you. Really? Now, now, Penny, what has H.C. Pinzer got that I haven't got? Mary Martin. Come on, Paul, D.G. and Sue. We'll go over to the mayor's office. We'll get everything done there. Penny, Penny! Mother, we better hurry before Mrs. Duncan shows up here with the rice. Penny Singleton Show featured Gail Gordon, Jim Backus, Steve Benadaris, Silas Selby, Mary Lee Robb, and Sheila James. Admiral Paul Foster was played by John Miljean. The music was composed and conducted by Von Dexter. The Penny Singleton Show, written and produced by Robert Soderbergh and directed by Max Hutto, stars Penny Singleton. Good night. Keep well. Mm-hmm.